The Federal Communications Commission has determined the following content to be emotionally harmful. Funny things that you think funny aren't funny. Give me cocks all the time. I want cocks all over me. The Alan Cox Show kicks ass, man. Welcome. Welcome. Show me what you got. You're not going to see a lot of cocks on TV. Alan Cox from the Alan Cox Show. I don't know what it's about you, but I can't even stand your voice. I think you're the biggest asshole alive. It's going to be a great show. Let's kick it. I'll say kick it, and you'll just kick it with a tasty groove, okay? One, two, three, kick it. Kick it, come on, god damn it, could you one time kick it, what the f***? Alan Cox. Here we go, he'll ad-lib, he'll be fine. It's the Alan Cox Show on 100.7 WMMS. There we go. What's going on, gang? Hi there. Howdy. Good afternoon. My name is Alan Cox. Thanks for being here. Welcome back. Live today in the studio. Of course, we were at Progressive Field yesterday for what I was told was um, everybody was talking about this once-in-a-lifetime thing that was going to happen in the ballpark yesterday, I I was misinformed. I thought that they were rolling out a a brand-new hot dog. So I was really, really excited about that. Of course, I didn't end up having any. You had a couple hot dogs. I had a couple hot dogs. Yeah. I had to have some hot dogs at the ballpark. I know you do. I know. Bill Squire's here. Creepy hugs, everybody. Mary Santora is back. She's there in New York, oh, but very low. Yeah. she's been gone for, well, Years. she was gone the week before I went on vacation, and then I was out uh, last week in Florida, and uh, and and now she's back. Uh, she's got her earthquake insurance paid off. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't realize how far away from the city that was. Everybody was, I heard a couple people joke about everybody living in New York pretending that they felt the earthquake, but I genuinely didn't realize that it was like, 50 miles outside of the city. It was well into New Jersey. When I wasn't that, um, here. I oh, was, you were uh, uh, still on the road? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I was in Arizona when that happened. And my roommate said it was, like, significant. Like, oh, she you felt could tell, it. She said in New York you could tell that there was an earthquake happening. It wasn't anything insane like they get on the West Coast. Um, but she was saying that it definitely wasn't, like, a little baby shake. Mm-hmm. She thought she said she thought that a building had been bombed. Oh, <laughs> that, really? Well, that, that was like that's the, a valid uh, concern out there. Aftermath of it, yeah. yeah. All right, you were gone. You didn't hear. I mean, we were. I think we just saw it on television. I was like, oh, I wonder if Mary's back now. Yeah, no, I wasn't there for that. I uh, called her though, and I was like, dude, did all of our like stuff fall off the walls? And she's like, no, it was just like shaking for a little bit. Did all like, of my book fall off the wall? Dude, I have so many books. Yeah. Don't even start. With I know. Me. I know. I know who I'm talking to. Um, They're not uh, nonfiction like yours are. Well, I do like nonfiction. I I tore through a couple of books on vacation. I read Kara Swisher's Burn book, which is fantastic. And I finished uh, the Marty Feldman autobiography, which is a great contemporary reference and read for you kids. Do you kids like Marty Feldman? How do you feel about him? Right? Remember Marty Feldman? No. no. Oh, he was Igor in Young Frankenstein. Oh, okay. Of course, you know, Abby someone. That's, of course, the late, great Marty Feldman. And uh, wrote a book on him. Uh, but uh, to your point, yeah, uh, uh, lots of books. You know, my uh, uh, father used to say, never trust anybody who doesn't travel with a book. And I don't know that that quote was his. Probably wasn't. But uh, the intent, I think, is still the same. I heard Stansbury talking earlier about people complaining or poo-pooing the eclipse yesterday. And somebody texted me, and they were like, oh, Coxie, you were such a—by the way, I like when people call me Coxie. Well, I like when girls call me Coxie. I don't know if this is a guy or a girl. Guy, it's condescending. Girl, it's kind of cute. You were an eclipse hater, Coxie. It was awesome. I never said—I'm not an eclipse hater. I said that they were overestimating the number of people who were going to be coming to this part of the country— because there were so many stops. And I still, to this day, don't know if I underestimated it or if they overestimated it. I just don't know. I mean, you know, when you saw they had wall-to-wall coverage on cable news and they had people posted up at all the cities. So they had people in Dallas and they had people in Little Rock and they had people over at the 
we were all posted up at the at the Guardians game, but they had a massive crowd at the Great Lakes Science Center, as you'd expect. I don't know if they were doing a big thing out at NASA. I, I think the to, NASA thing was at the Great that Lakes was, Science okay. Center. That I think makes it was sense. in conjunction. Okay. So they had a ton of people there. I thought maybe they'd send Al Roker out to Cleveland since he made his bones uh, here locally on television. But I, I was watching NBC. They sent some scrub out. Uh, with respect to him, but they had like uh, at the where they have the Indianapolis 500 in Indianapolis. Yes. That's where everybody was posted up there. You were there, yeah, too. Not not so for I'm, the eclipse, but you had been in Indianapolis. I was doing shows in Indianapolis yeah. Friday and Saturday, and um, it was a big weekend. The uh, Morgan Wallen, your guys's favorite country singer, got who arrested after saying the N word. Yeah, he got mm-hmm. arrested over the weekend in Nashville. Yeah, yeah he threw a chair over a balcony oh, of a bar God. and it hit some cops. <sighs> This you guy. didn't see that? No. I oh, he was just that. in Indianapolis when you were there? He was playing Thursday, Friday. So my Friday show, I was like, we pull from the same crowd, uh, me and Morgan Wallen. Yeah. Um, Friday was a little bit lighter, but then Saturday was completely sold out. And at one point, I asked a question about Indianapolis, and, like, nobody had the answer to it. And I was like, where are you guys Where are from? the black people? No. <laughs> I was like, uh, oh, they have an answer to that. Yeah. Not here. Yeah. They won't answer it, but they have an answer. I was like, are all of you from out of town? And it's a small room. It was only 60 people. But I would say 50 of the 60 people were there for the eclipse. Oh, and really? Am, yes. Like, there was a ton of tourists in town in Indianapolis for the for the eclipse. Okay. My well, brother. yeah, that's what I'm curious. I'm curious how many people, like my son literally called me yesterday morning. He goes, how far are you from o- Oralia? And I'm like, I don't know what you're saying. And it turned out he was trying to say Elyria, Ohio. I said, "From I go, I'm at the ballpark today doing the show. But I said, but the house is like 20 minutes from Elyria. He's like, oh, a couple of friends of mine and I are going to go out, come out to Elyria and watch the eclipse. And we're going to come by the house later. I said, awesome, great, because I hadn't seen him in a minute. But I was curious how many people had genuinely come in from all over. I think it was a lot. I it had it to have been. I mean, like it was all, a lot. Yeah. All the hotels I mean, were booked. and All, all the hotels, all the, all the Airbnbs, all that stuff was booked up. Yeah, And my White Sox family. fans don't travel, by the way. I got three, Not right now they don't. I got, <laughs> <laughs> I got three Go Sox fist bumps on my way out of the park yesterday. Cubs fans travel. There's people uh, going to White Sox uh, Guardians games. With Cubs jerseys on. But White Sox fans don't travel. These days, you don't have much reason to either. Cubs fans travel, but they don't so much. Sorry, your brother. No, you're fine. His They went to Indianapolis for the kids' spring break to plan stuff around the eclipse. And he said that in his hotel, my brother talks to everybody, my MAGA brother. Um, he said that in his hotel, pretty much everybody was traveling from somewhere in the Midwest now, was to he come to Indianapolis. Of the group that's like, this is God's punishment. No, he d- he's not a, like, doom and burn type of Christian. He's not that at all. He's not, like, uh, Old Testament fire and all brimstone right, well. kind of guy. He's, like, my brother is the kind of Christian where he's, like, I love you so much and I care about you so much that I want you to go to heaven because I want to be reunited with you one day. I don't want you to burn in hell. So he comes from, like, a place of I love you and care about you, not, like, you're so terrible you deserve to be punished. Hmm. So, no, he I guess that's like- a better place to come from. Yes. If anything, yeah. he's before he goes to this is God punishing the earth. He'll have a conspiracy theory about how the point zero one percent moved the moon to be in line. Like, uh-huh. He's more likely to do that. Uh, than so God. it's real hard. To, you're saying it's real hard to pin him down then, unless it you really, really, really know him. Okay, you could throw yeah. a dart. Maybe you'll hit something crazy. Maybe you'll hit something level headed on him. He sent some video of the eclipse from TikTok about why it proved that the Earth was flat. Like that is more of what you're going to get. He's more of a conspiracy theorist than like so a hate different kind of dumb. Got it. Well, because we were looking up, going, boy, I feel bad for all the flat earthers. Uh, but apparently it falls right in line with him. He thinks that somebody's just got a giant piece of construction paper up there in front of the sun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. It's mm. all it's all out there, Alan. Just ah. do your You got to do your own research. Up, you have to get see. on the interwebs and get the information for yourself. What I always get annoyed by with is when I do the research and it lines up with what I believe. They're like, no, not that research. <laughs> not science not research. That. Not, the, not the stuff that confirms that the Earth is round. We don't want you doing that research. Why are you going to the NASA website? Yeah. Not NASA. You got to get on Facebook where all of the real science information is. Oh. All right, I got a break.
Uh, want to send me a text, 35192, allencoxshow.com. You want to watch live, and uh, you can listen wherever you are on that iHeartRadio app. This is the Alan Cox Show. Everywhere on our free iHeartRadio app or whatever smart device you have. Just tell it to play the Alan Cox Show on iHeartRadio. Are you the decision maker in your company? Consider this. For the first time in decades, there's a better option for a corporate card and spend management platform. Meet Ramp, the only corporate card and spend management system designed to help you spend less money so you can make more. Most corporate credit cards offer points as incentives, but those points amount to less than their worth in real cash value. Ramp's corporate cards offer you cash back, real money in your pocket. Plus, you control who spends what with each vendor, and Ramp software collects and verifies receipts automatically, which means you'll stop wasteful spending and close your books in hours instead of days. Businesses that use Ramp add up to 5% to their bottom line the first year. If you're a decision maker, adding Ramp could be one of the best decisions you've ever made. And now, get $250 when you join Ramp. Just go to Ramp.com slash radio. Ramp.com slash radio. R-A-M-P dot com slash radio. Cards issued by Sutton Bank and Celtic Bank members of DIC terms and conditions apply. Life's better with American Family Insurance. Because our home policies help protect your dreams and come with peace of mind. Save up to 25% by bundling home, auto, and life. American Family Insurance. Get a quote, find an agent at amfam.com. Products not available in every state. Discounts may not apply to all coverages on an auto or home policy. Discounts do not apply to life insurance policies. Visit amfam.com to learn how discounts may apply to you. American Family Mutual Insurance Company, S.I. and its operating companies, American Family Life Insurance Company, 6000 American Parkway, Madison, Wisconsin. What's holding you back from learning the language you've always wanted to speak? Too hard. Takes too long. Not with Babbel. Babbel's lessons take just 10 minutes a day. 10 minutes isn't long. Nope. And they're fun. Fun isn't hard. Right. Babbel's interactive lessons, podcasts, games, and more make languages fun and engaging. You might even forget you're learning. And Babbel's lessons are built around real life. Babbel teaches language skills you'll actually use about travel, business, relationships, and more. You'll learn what matters most to you. Plus, Babbel's lessons are designed to get you having real conversations in as little as three weeks. Just three weeks? Even better. Since Babbel's lessons are voiced by real native speakers, you'll get pronunciation just right and be able to carry on conversations with confidence. Learning a language with Babbel doesn't take long. And with Babbel, it isn't hard. It's It's perfect. perfect. Get Babbel. It starts here. Go to Babbel.com to try for free. That's Babbel.com. B-A-B-B-E-L.com. Babbel.com. Hey, it's Alan for Window Nation. So April's here, and it might not be every single day, but when that springtime weather gets on a good run, that's when you want to throw the windows open. But what if you can't? Maybe the windows won't seal tight enough. Maybe you hear a little bit from the outside. Maybe you got condensation when you really don't want it. Time to talk to the experts at Window Nation. Right now, for every two windows you buy, they will give you two for free. There's no limit on how much you can save. But even more than that, no interest, no payments at all for 24 months. Start at windownation.com. Easily schedule your free in-home estimate or call them. Give them my name, 866-90-NATION. Window Nation windows look awesome. They have tons of styles made here in Northeast Ohio. They come with a lifetime warranty. You can get them in your home in a day or less. Proven quality, amazing service, top to bottom from Window Nation. Two free windows for every two you buy. No payments at all for 24 months. 0% interest. 866-90-NATION. Say Alan Cox told me all about it. Or go to windownation.com. Wouldn't it be nice if you could dump all your problems on someone else's back? Well, when you wake up to a clogged drain or a plumbing issue, Make that Mr. Rooter's problem. Hi, I'm Megan McKay, owner of Mr. Rooter Plumbing. We have been solving plumbing problems every single day for the last 29 years. In fact, I probably have a plumber right around the corner from your house right now. Call 855 Misters today or mrrooter.com. Call Mr. Rooter, he'll be there quick. You want a sub freshly sliced to order? You go to Jersey Mike's. You want the perfect radio idea? You go to me, like this. I'm a lone ninja warrior. By night, I glide unseen across the rooftops, watching my...
2K. Listen now. iHeartRadio. Free never sounded so good. iHeartRadio. To all our men and women in uniform. I've been a lifelong fan. 20 years of military. Come back. And to find your afternoon show is f***ing horrible. Thanks. From the Alan Cox Show. Horrible, horrible. On 100.7 WMMS. Oh, man, I was looking over the stuff that I have to give to you the remainder of the week. and ooh. Well, not you, Bill, the royal year. I'll take some of it. I know you would. Tom Segura, you ever heard of him? Yeah. yeah. He's coming. He's doing the Romo Fijo. Good for him. End of September. On the Come Together Tour. Who opens it. for him? Uh, My buddy Jeff Tate does from time to from time. From Queensryche? No, oh. different Jeff Tate. Mm. But he loves that joke. It's really funny. <laughs> Just like when I when people make the Billy Squire joke to me, I'm like, oh, so original. It's I never hear that. Strictly it's the great. 55 and over fans who yeah. make those jokes. Uh, Matt Fulcheron, he he does uh, he opens for him. Okay. Uh, Mike Cronin, mm-hmm. he opens for him regularly. Josh Potter, he's got a he's got a bunch of guys. Uh, 21 pilots are playing two nights later after Tom Segura at the Romo Fijo, late September. I'll have those Same for openers. you. I'm sorry? Same openers. Yeah, yeah. Matt Fulcheron <laughs> and 21 pilots. Uh, Eric Andre, the Eric Andre show, is coming to do June 15th at the Agora. That's going to be a wild scene. I'm interested to see what his, because he, he did a stand-up special a few years ago that was Funny because it's Eric Andre, but it was it's not tight. Wasn't you know? a home run, right? Yeah, it's not it's not like a tight stand up set because he's a wild man that's all over the place. But I wonder what it's that was. I think twenty fifteen or twenty sixteen. So I imagine he's got something a little more uh, on the rails, but not too on the rails. Yeah, I, I would I would go to that. Yeah, I would be interested to see. What he's going to do there, too. Uh, Josie Scott's Saliva. You know, talk about a band that's had a lot of uh, acrimony in the band there. Josie Scott, the original frontman for Saliva. Now he's got some guys, and he's calling it just Josie Scott's Saliva. And that's going to be uh, at the uh, uh, Temple Live in the Asylum Room. Is that that tiny room? The Asylum Room. It's a smaller room. Yeah, we yeah. saw Electric Six in some small room yeah, over that's there. Probably there the like one. Fifty people in there. I'm like, oh my god. Uh, that is in a couple of weeks, actually. That's April the 18th, and then of course, Better Than Ezra. Remember Better Than Ezra? I love Better Than Ezra. They are on the Live a Little tour. That's going to be May 16th at the House of Blues. Better Than Ezra has a front man. I met the guy a hundred years ago, and Better Than Ezra it would you know did a lot of press and things. I forget the guy's name. They're from New Orleans. His name is Kevin something. And he's a really good-looking dude, and I was always surprised that, like, he— Oh, Kevin James. Yes, Kevin James from The King of Queens. That's yeah, right. that's right. Uh-huh. Who um, uh, I forget the guy's name. It's Kevin something. But he's, like, a good-looking dude. And you're like, how did this guy, like, not blow up bigger in another way? I don't know. Maybe he did. It's not like I'm keeping uh, tabs on the guy. Speaking of Kevin James, uh, there was one day when we were in Florida, we couldn't have— uh, done any better with the weather but there was one day where it was nothing but thunderstorms and so we were inside all day reading and watching tv and, and we watched grown-ups it's we, funny oh god it's not i had it never is. seen I that i had never seen that movie before i mean salma hayek is fantastic it's fun looking at her but holy cow that movie because they made two or three of them right they made two of them three. and that's the better of the two. Oh, oh is it really no. i think they only made two grown-ups either way I enjoy those movies. Well, you probably saw it when you were much younger. I've I mean, that movie's like, like 15 years old now, right? I mean, 15, I, 20 years old? That's a movie that I watch every time it's on TV. If I'm scrolling through and Grown Ups is on, I will stop and watch it. Grown Ups is from 2010. Okay. Uh, well, anyway, uh, maybe because we were watching it on TNT or something. When you said it was from 2010, I'm like, oh, yeah, so like five years ago. <laughs> oh, wait, no, 14, no. 14 years ago. Uh, maybe they edited out all the funny stuff. Is there any chance that that could have happened? That's exactly what happened. You know how they say at the beginning of a movie, uh, uh, edited for time mm-hmm. constraints, you know? Could they have edited out all of the funny parts? Yes. Okay. Listen, I, I must be in the minority. I-, I think that movie was huge. It did really well at the box yeah. office. I I don't love it the way Mary does, but I think it's an okay Adam Sandler movie. It was fun to watch with my kids when they were little. 
Like we all had some laughs. Yeah, somebody must have been doing it. Either it was purely coincidence or somebody was uh, leaning very heavily. The house we rented had direct TV. And um, somebody must have been leaning very heavily on the Adam Sandler because uh, the first couple nights uh, when we were there, I watched The Water Boy, which I had also never seen. And uh, holy cow. So you got to go, man, God bless Adam Sandler because he's obviously a talented guy. Uh, but, uh, boy, leaning heavily on that Happy Gilmore and Billy Madison as far as those later movies go. But God yes. bless him because, you know. I have a soft spot for Adam Sandler. I think I a like lot of people do. Much, I, I, think- I do, too. I think he's a, I think he's a very talented guy. I think when you see him in dramatic stuff, I think he's dynamite. But these – and you think you watch a movie like Grown Ups and I go, this script was probably five pages long. They're like, hey, we'll just hang out. Something funny will happen, and then we'll film it. I, I guarantee, just watching that movie, that's what they figured. Hey, some funny things will happen. You got Rock and Spade and, and then Rob Schneider. And um, You didn't think the part where Rob Schneider's got three daughters, two of them are really hot, and then one of them looks like Rob Schneider wasn't the funniest thing you've ever seen? <laughs> well, I mean, I get what they were doing, and it's, uh, you know, but again. I mean, it's. Well, it shows you, though. It's humor. It's not. I think it also underscores how quickly things have changed. Because, yes, 14 years, but that's not, you know, in the span of, of a your, a person's lifetime. That yeah, It's a decade and a half. But over the grand scheme of things, it's not that long. But, boy, there's a lot of stuff in those movies back then you couldn't do now. Well, I mean, you go back five or six years before that movie, and it was, I now pronounce you Chuck and Larry, where right. it's just the F word. Well, but that's going thing. further back, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, But but 2010 to me does not feel like that long ago. Right. It feels like five years ago. It, like five nah. years ago. Yeah. Uh, Waterboy, though, I I like that movie. See, I that's, don't, I mean, Waterboy's I like anything, stupid, but it's, it's very funny. dumb. Yeah. It's fine. I remember liking it a lot more as a kid than I, like, rewatched yeah, it's, it. Yeah, it's definitely what I'm not trying to go back and rewatch because I know I'll be very disappointed. But as a kid, I enjoyed it quite a bit. Billy Madison, I feel like, holds up the best of all those stupid movies. Happy Gilmore, too. And Happy Gilmore is very good, too. And, and those Big are like, Daddy. Big Daddy's pretty fun, yeah. They're, all um, good. they're not all good. They're not. They're <laughs> no. definitely not all Little good. Nikki? Little no, Nicky is thank a piece you. of trash. No, thank I you. I don't think I've ever seen that one all the way through. Yeah, it's trash. Um, that was at the point where they go, Adam Sandler, just throw him a bag of money. He'll come up with something funny, and he'll uh, pack it with, uh, you know, stars, and it'll be fine. Uh, did Ma- was Mary still at home when the flooding happened? With, with the f- uh, I didn't realize flooding. there were flooding. There was flooding in New York. You were, was there was flooding, flooding in Pittsburgh. In flooding in Pittsburgh? There was flooding in Pittsburgh, but oh. there was. Oh, no. <laughs> we're ankle deep. We got to red up our rooms. Get the shop back. Also, I did not come home. I was home one night to see the Fall Out Boy concert, and that was in Columbus. I was in Vegas, and then Oh, you I was were out in... of New York for two weeks? No. Well, basically, I mean, we were here. Brian and Blake came to visit here for three days in New York, and yeah. then we went to Arizona, and then I went to Indiana. I've been in, like, seven states in the last two weeks. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, um, but it's always flooding here. I mean, if it rains for more than an hour, the subways flood. Yesterday was, for meteorologists and weather people and kind of um, astronomers and things like that, obviously, those people got very, very excited. But weathermen on television were just, you want to talk about ankle deep. These guys were just cream in their jeans, and some of them were crying, getting very emotional. Did you see anyone get emotional yesterday? We were a progressive field, and it was... It wasn't really emotional where we were, but I did... Hear people say they teared up and really? things like that, but I because I they know it's the only it. time they'll see it in their lifetime. Yeah, I mean, and it was just, I mean, yeah. it is a beautiful, it's cool moment. It was, it was very cool. I didn't get uh, emotional from that, but it was, it was excite. Ex- I, I was excited. I mean, is that I, an emotion? I think if yes. I were home, I would have cried because we didn't get in New York. We didn't get the totality that you guys did. Like right. Brian sent me a video. Of it going from day to night in like yes, a couple minutes, I was like that, crazy. and then he sent me our n- hillbilly neighbors were setting up fireworks. <laughs> but, um, I was hey, like, good for I them. Was, I mean, you, got, yeah, you know, why wait till July? Just for that, I love yeah. that. Um, but I feel like if I would have been there, it would have been much more enveloping than it, it was here. Like here, it kind of just got a little darker, and it was a little bit colder. 
Mm. But it looked like it was going to rain. That was like the atmosphere in New York was like it went from a beautiful sunny day to looking like it was going to rain for 15 minutes, and then it was a beautiful sunny day again. Well, I had really high hopes yesterday morning because a thing that I had read, and I probably mentioned it yesterday, but the thing that I had read was that Cleveland uh, coincidentally was going to end up with the least amount of cloud cover. For once in our miserable lives, yesterday seemed to really work out. Because like Buffalo and Dallas, there were all these other places on the path that had way more cloud cover. And obviously, you know, we joked for for the past month that when yesterday came, it was going to be snowing and cloudy and all that crap. But it all seemed to work out for one time. You know, so many things in life now are promoted to us constantly as a a once-in-a-lifetime event, right? Oh, it's the season finale of of girls on BET, you know, the once in a lifetime event. This is one of those things. It's like legit a once in a, you know, I don't know where I'm going to be in 2099. Uh, but well, uh that's just the next time it'll be in this area. It's going to happen in North Dakota in 20 years. Yeah, I'll go there. So that's not a once in a life. And then in 2026, it's going to be in, like, Europe. So yeah, well, like it happens could. every 18 months, right? Yeah, you yeah. could. I mean, I suggested, I sent an email out here. I suggested that we donate all of our unused MMS glasses to, there's, like, global astronomy um, organizations that will distribute them yeah. Yeah. to places around the world that are going to have a full uh, solar eclipse. We could be uh, spreading the gospel of the buzzard worldwide just imagine people standing there like in botswana or whatever and they have um a wmms certified uh, glasses on for the eclipse It'd be very exciting for them they wouldn't know are what the hell all, was going on huh are they all bureau chiefs after that <laughs> I, I don't know but you know how they send the merch of the losing super bowl team overseas they just sh- ship giant uh, cardboard boxes of whoever loses. Who did the Chiefs beat this year? Uh, the uh, Chiefs beat the 49ers, 49ers right? Yeah. All that 49ers Super Bowl champions gears went overseas. We should be packing our Eclipse glasses in there, too. I mean, that's they're, I think Brunuts is doing something like that, where if yeah. you take their stuff, your, your glasses to them, they'll send them to some kids that are... They can't stop looking at the sun. So it's a great idea. They can't stop looking at the <laughs> yeah, sun because they're just looking up for hope. I have implored. They're-, <laughs> they're looking for God anywhere mm-hmm. in the skies. Is there anyone it's who sees there. our plight? Nope. No. You should stare at the uh, sun because it'll burn your eyes and you'll stop trying to look uh, for some inconsequential uh, man in the sky. David Hartman was the meteorologist on staff there in Dallas. Uh, well, he was live. He, he's a, a weatherman at a television station in Jackson, Mississippi. Of course, he went out there uh, to Dallas, and he got very emotional. Ring. Here we go. It's just about to go total. Look for the... Look for the diamond ring. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. There it is. That's the diamond ring right there. Look at the diamond ring. Spectacular. Oh, look there. There's a small cloud and you see a halo. Look at that. If the diamond ring is still, you can still see the diamond ring. Unbelievable. And there it is. Oh, my God. (laughs) Listen to that horn. Oh, my God. Oh, she's beautiful. I wonder if that's David Hartman from WAPT in Jackson, Mississippi. Very excited there about the diamond. Like the double rainbow guy. Remember the oh, double rainbow guy? Rainbow. One of the best. Full rainbow. All the way. Double rainbow. Oh, my God. It's a double rainbow all the way. Whoa. That's so intense. Whoa. Man. Whoa. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, t- oh my God. Whoa. <laughs> It started to even look like a triple rainbow. That guy was very clearly tripping balls, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah, okay. Absolutely. What do you think that the double rainbow guy is doing now? Yeah, probably. He lost his mind yesterday. Uh, no, he lost his life. He died some time oh, ago. Oh, but never mind. 
<laughs> Paul Vasquez, this is not a guy in good shape, right? Big, heavy dude. Uh, Paul Vasquez was the double rainbow guy. He died in the first uh, uh, couple of months of COVID. Oh. And so um, things did not uh, go well for him. He was young-ish. He was in his mid-50s. But the double rainbow guy will, of course, live forever uh, in our hearts. Hey, Joe. What's going on, Joe? Very good. Yeah. Joe, maybe 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 you can clear something up for me because we were talking to a guy yesterday who came by our broadcast table at Progressive Field. And he grabbed a couple of our MMS Eclipse glasses because he said that his welding helmet was not a sufficient lens to look at the Eclipse. That there's different lens thicknesses and things, and the Eclipse glasses um, were obviously uh, sufficient, whereas he said a welding helmet was not going to be good enough. You're not, you're not calling me blind now, are you? Okay, okay good. Okay. Okay. Are are you are you a are you a welder by trade, Joe, or you just like to weld? Ah. But you still have your welding helmet. Okay. Yes. Yeah. That's why, Joe, uh, dropping your pants is called mooning someone. <laughs> All right, guys. All hey, right. You Thank you, nice Joe. Day. All yeah. right. You too. There's Joe and Orwell. Uh, all right. <laughs> Thank you. I uh, for admit. That. I was a little like, why is everybody freaking out about? It? Like, not like annoyed, but I was like, I mean, I get it. You're it's a hating. cool thing. You were hating. No, I just wasn't just, that in. You made a video where you were hating on it with your not roommate. Hating on it. Just well, my being roommate, a hater. My roommate was like, really like, we gotta make sure we're home because we went grocery shopping and did laundry yesterday. And she's like, we gotta make sure we're home by the time of the eclipse. We gotta take our glasses with us just in case we are. Like, she was so excited, and I was like, guys, like, chill. It's gonna be fine. And then, um, but then as it was happening, I'm like, this is cool. And then when Brian sent me the video from Cleveland of it going to like nighttime darkness, I was like, all right, this is pretty awesome. So I was like, I was kind of far the one way. And then I was kind of with you because there are versions of eclipses pretty frequently, right? Yeah. And so I think people are like, yeah, it'll just be like all your stuff. It was pretty cool. The partial eclipse that was when we were in the parking lot a few years ago was, yeah, that was kind of neat. That Is one yesterday one? was another level of, like, that's a once-in-a-lifetime experience for most people. And I thought it was incredibly cool, and I was uh, just really blown away by how just, I how excited I got in the moment. Like, it was, it was I didn't think I was going to be that level of excited, and I just fully fell into it. Mary, it sent Bill back to the Mormon church. It did not. He Who found he found his ew, faith ew, again. Don't say gross things like that. It's <laughs> disgusting. He found Oh, it sent him right back there. No, no, no. no, no. I like the uh, on the subject of welding helmets, Lowe's has signs all over the go. We cannot accept any returned welding helmets that were bought on April 7th or April 8th.
<laughs> All these people buying welding helmets for the eclipse. That's funny. Sorry, like- we're not going to accept them if you return them two days later. Were eclipse glasses not readily available? I picked mine up at the We had a ton of people. They were, was, I, they were everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I mean. There were some people that like made it seem like they couldn't get their hands on a pair or that they had to buy them off Amazon or something. But I was like, I went into the, it was in Indianapolis. So like the whole airport was set up for like Eclipse 2024. Like yeah. so it was a big deal in Indianapolis. But they had stacks and stacks of them all over the airport. So I took a couple and I was like, I feel like this would have been kind of everywhere. We had plenty from. Oh, we really did, yeah. yeah. But people came. I, I think and the some guardians were, were handing them out. They were, yeah. they were all over the place. Yeah. yeah. I think some people were grabbing ours just because they had the buzzer on them. But other mm-hmm. people, they were like, "I don't have a pair yet." Yeah. And the thing is, five minutes from now, so I think they knew that they were going to be. Uh, and the guardians won, so it was a good day all around. The eclipse happened. The guardians won. What a day! Those White Sox keep on trying. So six ten tonight. I think it's the second of three. Uh, those White Sox still hoping for their second win uh, this season. Maybe it'll happen tonight. So we will dip a little early tonight. 6-10 is your first pitch. White Sox, Guardians over at Progressive Field here tonight on MMS. I got a break. Want to send a text? 35192 for that. We'll be back. The Alan Cox Show on 100.7 WMMS. And everywhere you go.
Is your mega brother a rapture guy? There were a lot of people who thought the rapture was going to coincide with the eclipse. Not really. He's, I'm telling you, he's more like, he's more conspiracy theory. He is more aggressive with conspiracy theories than he is with anything that has to do with Christianity. Hmm. Well, that tells you something about the level of his devotion to Christianity. Oh, no, he's devoted, but he... He's, he's more devoted more, to conspiracy theories. He's more apt to uh, talk your ear off about conspiracy theories than about Christianity. Oh, I see. Because he's trying to convince people or he's trying to just... He's just passionate about it. <laughs> Imagine being passionate about conspiracy theories. There's a, there's a few of I them. I think there's a lot of people that... Things that are largely quantifiably hard. false. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of people well, that get into that because it's... They feel like that makes them interesting, like they know something that other people don't, so... They I don't have even a leg know if up. it's that, because that, that to me makes, that dismisses what they're saying. And I'm not saying that what he's saying is true or what he believes is true, but it doesn't have to be an ego thing. I think some people just like having something to believe in. I'm not like, oh, I look hate at, believing in things. Not look at me, look <laughs> at how interesting I am. It's just like, oh, this is something that I believe to be true, and I think it's cool. Yeah. I thought they were the F your feelings people, the red hats. Well, th- this is the thing about him is that he's a very New Testament Christian. He's very compassionate, very loving, pretty accepting. One of those like, if you're you, and how's he a MAGA guy? Want, you can do whatever you want as long as it doesn't hurt me or my kids, kind of a thing. Right. Um, but he believes in Donald Trump because of the economy. He's like, I've never made more money in my life than I made under him. Like, he's more Donald Trump for financial reasons. Yeah, but Biden's economy of- is far and away better than Trump's. My brother's a real estate agent, ah, so it is not for him. I see. Um, and also, so it's uh, a, it's about his economy, not Trump's economy. Well, it's about how he was doing under that president. Right. And I also think that he likes that Trump had no filter. He just like says says whatever the hell he wants, and you know, a lot like of people that. like that. I, I don't yeah. understand why people think that's a good thing. I don't like that at all. It means you're not thoughtful. It means you don't think things through. It means you're usually pretty hateful and. I don't like people like well, that. Well, I, th- I, I think, think it's, it's less a, I think it's less about that and more about politicians with no filter because people assume that everyone in politics is lying. Most of them are. Um, but um, it's probably got more to do with that than anything else. Anyway, no rapture. If you're a no rapture right. believer, you're like, oh, for six million on the rapture. Hasn't happened. Um, but listen, I, you know, not to pull the curtain back too far while we were at the ballpark yesterday, Bill, I did pay a guy to release 50 human shaped helium balloons from my backyard during the eclipse. Beautiful. Cause I have evangelical neighbors and I wanted to freak them out. And I think it worked. Boy, the amount I of, think it worked. The amount of evangelicals that are getting popped for pedophilia and things of that nature is really putting the catholic church to shame these days it is a lot i, I well I, it's a race to the bottom yeah and also a lot more cops than you think too cops well yeah, they, get, they, get, they, they get popped a lot too um yeah so i i i, I play it was certainly cost me a pretty penny but it was well worth it to freak some neighbors out and uh, i i hope that they have i guess you shouldn't have blown your leaves into my yard margaret hm. yeah take that yeah Idiot. That's all I'm saying. So I went to get a haircut this morning. I see. Yeah. Uh oh. Caved. Well, I- I'm hosting this Playhouse Square show in a couple of weeks, and so I'm like, well, I should Ooh, probably. What's that? I'm hosting uh, uh, the Phil Rosenthal show. That's oh, coming nice. Through. Yeah. So Phil eats food. What? Is yeah, that, yeah, feed Phil. Or, feed yeah. Phil yeah, Phil yeah. Rosenthal is the yeah. guy who created Everybody Loves Raymond with Ray Romano, and he's had a. Uh, a cooking travel show. He had one on PBS, and it's on Netflix now. It's called Feed Phil, and he's doing like a tour. He's doing a spoken word thing, and they hit me up and said, hey, we'd like you to host and moderate this thing, and so I'm going to do that. So if you're going to that, I'll see you there. It's it's April 25th over at Playhouse Square. And so, you know, I've been growing my hair out, and I thought, well, maybe I clean myself up a little bit and uh, just so, uh, uh, you know, l- so I don't look homeless or whatever. And then I always, always, always feel like I sold out. That I caved. I mean, I can oh, grow wow. it again. Yes, because it's You're like. 50. What do you mean? What's that got to do with anything? He's over but 50. How do you sell out? Because like I'm a long hair guy. Grown ass man. I'm a long hair guy. 
Oh, we have been. Into middle age. You were a long hair guy. <laughs> Coming into you're middle not. age, you're so sweet. I've been in middle age for a good decade now. Yeah, so that's you're... what I'm saying. Is like, how could you possibly be selling out? I mean, in by the cutting it, your hair. lower case, because I'm a long hair guy. You were a long hair guy. Well, in my heart, I always am. That's why I grew up back out. So I'm coming around the corner this morning, coming to work, and I see this homeless guy, and I was jealous of that guy. It's like, God, what the, you know. Again, I, I didn't shave my head or anything, but. Um, my hair's yeah. getting pretty long. It's almost covered my ears. No, no, as, no, long as, as long as I've ever had it. Like, I've never I, had I it this long I am not before. a fan of long hair on guys. Like, really Well, not. fortunately, you and I aren't dating, Mary. I understand. I'm not trying I to think- impress you. I'm just saying, I think everybody looks better a little bit more clean cut. I don't think everybody shorter. looks better in one way of anything. Right. To also, me. the, I'm saying the taste that you have is just so bad. When you, you were at Fall Out Boy. You're talking to her or me? For her. When oh. she was like out at Fall Out Boy and she's like, I don't like Jimmy Eat World. I just, I can't with you. I Jimmy just Eat World is probably one of the worst bands I've ever heard of. I will say this. Jimmy Eat show. World, I they are Jimmy a World. very hot and cold band. I like them too. But I've seen them one time where they were great, and I've seen them where they were awful. So I'm not talking about them live. I'm talking about just Jimmy Eat World. Well, as she a, saw them live. Great band. Yeah. Well, well here's the thing. Yeah. Jimmy Eat World opened for Fall Out Boy, and uh, I know the middle. That's the only song by them that I know. Oh, you don't and know Sweetness. In, well, I'm, I didn't recognize much of anything. Bleed else. American. Yeah, Bleed American's a great. Song. I'm listening to it like who's who's. Favorite band is this? This music. Tom DeLonge. <laughs> it's Tom DeLonge. Twenty years band. ago, it the- was a lot of girls your age. And they loved Jimmy Eat World. I mean, and everybody's probably going to say the same things about what I'm about to say about Fall Out Boy. Like to me, every Jimmy Eat World song except the middle sounded identical. It was all the same cadence. It all seemed to have the same ten or twelve words. Um, and they didn't perform great. Like the guy just kind of stood there. The lead singer just stood there. And the other guys were just, they were just Who's that, Jim Adkins, see the main guy? I don't know the name. I, I think know. that Jimmy Eat World has been off the radar for a minute, so maybe they're shaking off some rust. Because I don't think they've been out there for a minute. I would never, ever, ever pay to go see them by themselves. Wow. I can right. say that with full, like, I wouldn't regret saying that for one second. Hit me with some Bleed American. I was going to play Praise Chorus for you. Oh, Praise Chorus is yep. great, too. This sounds like 400 other bands you would like. No, no, it doesn't. This is Hollister music. This is the music when you so would watch Hollister. Boy. No, it is not. Oh, come on. In the on. early 2000s, and everybody's like trying to be so cool. Why do you think they're like, on tour with Fall Out Boy? It's the same crowd. It is not. These guys are it from Phoenix. Not. And I can tell you it's not. Huh? Because not even, I would say not even a fifth of the audience was into Jimmy Eat World the way that they were into Fall Out Boy. And I get it, Fall Out Boy's the headliner. But they did not rock out by any means. There were a couple of diehards really singing every word, and then everyone else was pretty indifferent to Jimmy Eat World. Huh. Well, they're not nearly as popular a band, so that's a big part of but it. But they're not but, an unpopular band. I, I, I mean, yeah, I'm a they big had a bunch fan. of hits. Boy. I'm a big fan. Of Jimmy I like. Eat World. I, I wouldn't call myself a big fan, but anytime I hear them, I'm not unhappy. I like them. And with that Bleed like American, that's, that's. Uh, let me find Bleed American. Uh, I bet it's gonna sound like exactly what you already don't, have. No, <laughs> that's, it's one of their harder it's songs. Not in here. What? They have Bleed American, though. It is a good song, though. See, you guys talk about that the same way I talk about country music, and it's, uh, no. Absolutely. No, but all I'm saying is there's a reason they're on tour with Fall Out Boy. I think Fall Out Boy felt bad for them, that they've been around for 40 no, years. it's not the first time those two bands have toured, is what I'm saying. I'm not saying. What do you mean? What they, are they, you they just can saying? do a headlining tour. They do. Can they? Yeah. Why are they opening, then? Because it's it pays good. Yeah, you're going to see a lot of people. They would draw well. They could not do a stadium headlining tour. No, really but they, you weren't in a stadium. You were in an arena. Well, Are guess we what? With all due respect, arena. neither can the Black Keys, but that doesn't stop them from doing arenas. I, and I don't care how many people like a band. I don't care yeah, right. if I like a band. I'm not one of these bandwagon you... people that I go and go, oh, look at all the – no, I, I don't care if there's 10 people at the show. I'm going to have a good time because I like the band. What I'm but saying that's is – the point that you're making. Just because you like them does not mean that they are capable of headlining in a stadium tour. I didn't – again, they can't – I didn't say they could, but they can do – they have done headlining tours they could in mid-level venues like Agora and stuff like that. No, 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 no. no, 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 no they, listen, can, listen, they can do 2,000 seats, no listen. problem. I don't believe that. I've seen Jimmy E. World play big, big venues. Here's what I'm saying. Most bands are not doing stadiums. 
I meant to say arenas. Oh, oh arenas. Well, that's, that's completely arenas. different. And most yeah. most I've bands seen, aren't doing arenas. arenas either. Yeah, Jimmy Eat World, I've seen them on big, big shows. And I don't care if a band can do it. Or I actually would rather go see a band at House of Blues or the Agora in a smaller venue than an arena show. You're so annoying. Why is why is because that annoying? It's a though? better it's a better <laughs> venue for music. Because you're like this is the best band ever. Everything's great. Everybody should love them. I can't believe you don't like them. You know what? I don't care that you don't like them. <laughs> like pick them, pick them. No, I didn't say I it. don't. No, I know you don't like them because you don't like good music. So it's not That's like not I. I it's, it's pretty true. But people, it's very true. <laughs> no, I'm I I'm genuinely curious. Um, and it sounds more like it was performance based. But just. Thinking about all the scene kids 20 years ago, they were all listening to those I, same bands. They were listening to Jimmy Eat World, and they were listening I to think Fall Out Jimmy Boy, Eat and they were World listening. Is older than that. 20 years ago was Fall Out Boy. I feel like Jimmy Eat World was Jimmy Eat World. Years ago. Jimmy this Eat song- World only predates Fall Out Boy by maybe six or seven years. I not even, not even a full many, decade. Yeah, yeah. Like late mid late 90s, maybe. And when Fall- they got their biggest hits, it was maybe two or three years before Fall Out Boy started hitting. Well, was there a third band? Songs. Was there at least a third band on the lineup that you enjoyed or no? Uh, car? Car. Does that sound right? C-A-R-R? Oh, yeah. They came X? through. Yeah, car? yeah. They opened for somebody else a while back that we gave miss, away tickets we missed to. them, um, but we were standing in the merch line during that set. Car is just and a girl, right? Yes. Yeah. It's one, I think it's a girl in a band or maybe just yeah. one girl. I don't know, but they thanked her at the beginning. So, yes, Car was the opener. Right. Opener, opener. But again, those crowds are going to be 40-year-olds, right, for those bands? The former scene kids I mean, are all grown up. Huh? Mid-30s. I'd say there were some, there were actually, because Fall Out Boy released an album not too long ago, so there were some younger kids there, and it was just blatant, the new versus old crowd, because when they're playing their hit hits, and people are screaming and it's loud. And then there would be like deep cuts that one of my favorite songs is called Hum Hallelujah. And that's not one of their uh, like top songs. I so- think Jimmy Eat World, Jimmy, this Jimmy Eat World formed in 93. I think Jimmy Eat World always seemed like an older band. Yes. Well, then, and they've Fall never Out Boy been a, was they, like they've never been a mainstream band by any means. Well, that's means. what I was gonna say is that like you could tell the age difference because the people who were singing along to Fall Out Boy's new album, the songs that I had never heard before, were twenty five and under. Yeah, well, because Fall Out Boy g- goes back into that. They were more like a, I don't know, Hello Kitty, but all their all their song titles no, or puns and not. yes, they were. No, you they were way. To them. Huh? <laughs> It wasn't Hello Kitty. I mean, it wasn't even. They were, really they're a hometown topic. band. Fall Out Boy was kicking around Chicago, begging people to pay attention to them before they blew up. Jimmy Eat well, World. That's what most bands do. Jimmy Eat World. They have a. They've had a lot of hits. All I'm saying is, Jimmy Eat World is a mainstream band. They're on the radio. MMS plays Jimmy Eat okay. World. Right. They're not an I, underground band. They so, have one popular song. No, they, they have a bunch of the hits. Middle. No, that, I don't, I don't Sweetness, buy that. Hear You, Hear Me, Praise Chorus, Pain, Bleed American. These were all radio hits for them. What Prince you, played what the middle, which is, is cool. Number one. What's what? Pr- Prince Prince played the middle, and there's a bootleg of Prince playing the middle that's like one of the – and there's a, there, there's a video of one of the guys from Jimmy Eat World reacting to it, and it's pretty awesome. Anyway, I'm not even arguing anything. I was kind of, um, I was curious at uh, the vibe at that show. This was a new, it was at Jones Beach? Where was this? No, this was in Columbus. Oh, in Columbus. Okay. Columbus, Ohio. I flew back to, um, to go just for one night. I flew home, drove to Columbus with my friend, saw the show, drove back up, and then me, Brian, and Blake flew out to New York the very next morning. Um, It was great. I mean, it's, it's very much me. Think of my generation. It is. 28 to, well, not even, probably 30 to 40-year-old women right. were the main demographic at this show. And there were, I mean, there's some guys and stuff like that, too. There were a couple older. And then there was a, a, a I'd say maybe a quarter of the audience was under 28, you know, and they like the new stuff. But um, they uh, they kill it, dude. They're so, they are so good. Listen, live. there's people who are going to, some bands are just going to hit people at the right time, right? Every kid goes to college. Discovers Pink Floyd or Radiohead or whatever it is, right? There are some bands that just resonate with people, and certain bands from that genre still do. There's nothing wrong with that. But yeah, I have I mean, seen, I have seen over the course of the last 25 years, I have seen Jimmy Eat World 
do a great show and do a terrible show. This so wasn't a good one. It's like, to me, a band, it's like a restaurant. You go, well, I got him on a bad night. I don't know. You know, maybe the guy was sick. Maybe he wasn't, you know, you, you, um, you pays your Patrick, money and you takes your chances. Patrick Stump was sick and, and told us, and it was still a better performance. Like, he was like, I am very sick. Like, I'm on so many cold medicines right now. I'm sorry if I sound crappy. I could have canceled the show, but I'm not going to. So even a sick Patrick Stump put on a better show than a healthy, whoever the hell the lead singer is of Jimmy Eight World. Mm. Well, I mean, like I said, you like your music, and we, we will never see eye to eye on the music that we like because you really All like a lot of different stuff. kind of sounds the same too, though. I didn't, say, like, I didn't say it doesn't. I just, I know what I like, and I know bands, what you like, and we like very different stuff. There have to be bands that the two of you like. Probably not. Because even in the genres that we like, she likes different stuff than – I think the closest would probably be My Chemical Romance. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. Because I like some of their stuff. <laughs> like, but... Oh, boy. <laughs> no, listen. I mean, it's, you know, it's fine. I figure there has to be some common ground between the two of you. Oh, you know what was really cool at the Fall Out Boy show that I loved? They um, did this – because it's kind of in different parts, right? And in the one part, they said – they played this voiceover that was like the sound of a mom calling on like a voicemail. And at the end, they say, just remember 20 years ago, you left a light on in Chicago, which is like a, a line from one of their very early, early hits. And then they brought stage lights physically down so it looked like they were playing in a club. So like they blacked out the rest of the stage, put the lights maybe two feet above their head, and it felt like you were in like a like a tiny little music venue. And then um, they played like six back to back to back songs all from their first album. And that was awesome. I love that was probably my favorite part of the entire show. Felt hmm. really cool. I thought I've never seen anybody else do that. We're like made brought it down to like a hey, here's where we came from vibe. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I saw you two do that. <laughs> I didn't bring this up. You didn't? I what was, happened? I was no, I'm saying I was talking about how I like short hair on guys and Bill oh, attacked me for liking yeah. Fall Out Boy. <laughs> or not liking Jimmy. Because they have Fall long Boy. hair, Mary, Pete Wentz, well, whatever. I'm just saying I, your he your opinions weirdo. are invalid to me because of all the opinions you have I disagree with on so many levels. <laughs> <laughs> Even men's hair. Uh huh. But you both like my chemical romance. Yes. She likes it a lot more than I do. Aw, don't do that. <laughs> no, I'm sad. Somebody told me they ran into a uh, pound cake in front of Barrio yesterday, all dressed up. For Imagine your first day at your new job is Eclipse Day. Yeah, oh, right. God, right? You're dressed up. I love it. Alan, could you please have Mary explain Jelly Roll? I don't get it or him. Well, he's Country jelly Post roll. Malone, right? I mean, yeah, a lot of people don't get Jelly Roll. I, I feel like if you hear his voice, you should be able to get it. The dude's got a killer voice. He's yeah. like a powerhouse. I don't know how I don't know how much more there is to explain. I mean, he's a big fat. He's not attractive, and he's a got way, a hot wife like, though. Boy, these country, these bumpkins. God bless him. He's they, like yeah. You know, they get a little bit of uh, success or whatever, and they end up with a hot wife. A lot of times, it's like the girl that stood by him. Yeah. You know. Yeah, because they've been My together My wife believed in me before anybody else did. Well, for real. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I love Good for him. He's seen, from all accounts, I have a friend. I'll give you Jelly Roll. Jelly Roll's all right. I only I know, know that one song. We yeah, play. I know that one song, and it's fine. It's, it, like, it's, it's a good song. I don't go deep with him. Yeah, he's, I mean, I don't know that there's much not to get. He's got an incredible voice. He's not really, I, I've never seen him live, but I can't imagine he's doing much running around. Um, so I can't speak his <laughs> You don't think it, you're saying his calisthenics yeah. might be uh, not <laughs> yeah. on point? All right. Yeah. He's going to be the next dude to get skinny. You th his yeah. whole thing is being a big fat dude. I, everybody does that until they break out, and then they go, hey, man. Hey, you keep, still fat? You want to keep this going, you got to take better care of yourself. You know? Yeah. Why do you think Lizzo gets off social media every nine months? Because she's like, I, I, I don't want, I don't need people giving me a hard time about whatever. If you don't like my music, you don't like me, go away, right? Because she's not, she's not hitting the gym. She's like, I'm going to do me and whatever. It's a diet. It's not I think she's a vegetarian. Uh, I might be making that up, Well, but good, I feel uh, like I've seen that on her Instagram. Good for her, whatever she's doing. But Jelly Roll, at some point, 
This is a guy who's like, God, I wish I didn't get all these face tattoos. I don't think he cares. No, he said that. God, oh, I wish did I didn't really? get all these face tattoos. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. I'm like, no, man, this is your moment. This is this is the this is the face tattoo era, right? A couple years, it's gonna be super passe, but you still got some time on that. So I say strike while the iron's hot. Which People one are, are you getting? I'm sorry. What face tattoo are you getting? Oh, I'm not at liberty to divulge that. Helen. I'm sorry. Is it a new endorsement? <laughs> it sure is. Yeah. No, I'll tell you before I get it. It will be uh, over each of my earlobes. <gasps> is that the face? Are you tattooing? I never, I never really looked at his face tattoos. These are really bad. Jelly roll? Yeah, yeah. that's why he's like, uh, you only have one face. I got a break here. If you want to send a text, 35192. AllenCoxShow.com is where you can watch, and we'll be back. It's the Alan Cox Show. Everywhere.
Amazing story in a multi-part podcast series featuring legendary Hall of Famers, current NBA superstars, and basketball media personalities. Games with Names, a sports history podcast on a search to find the greatest games of all time. Choosing Sides F1 Season 2. This season, you'll find out more about all the different pillars that make up this incredible sport, all the details and reasons to become a certain type of F1 fan. Hear these podcasts and more on your free iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. Oh, yeah! I'm going to go see comedian Tom Segura. He's bringing the Come Together Tour to Cleveland. Going to play the Romo Fijo on Thursday night, September the 26th. You can go directly to TomSegura.com if you want details on the program. Tickets info, all that. I will have these tickets for you about this time of day, uh, the remainder of the week. So two here for you to see Tom Segura at the Romo Fijo in September. Good luck. Call 10. 216-578-1007 or 800-348-1007. He's looking for people who like to laugh. <laughs> How you doing? Just so he can see their disappointment. Aww. The Alan Cox Show <laughs> on 100.7 WMMS. I think the Cavs are off tonight. They're on a slide, boy. The last few games, they finished their last road trip. I think they've lost three in a row. Yeah. Uh, And they will finish the regular season this Sunday night. So they will play the Grizzlies tomorrow night, 7 o'clock. Friday, they'll play the Pacers and then uh, wrap the regular season with the Hornets uh, here at the Royal Fijo on Sunday afternoon. But your Cleveland Guardians uh, play the White Sox again tonight. Uh, Shut out the Sox yesterday for the home opener. So that's exciting for Cleveland Guardian fans. Um, 6-10 tonight. I don't know if there's wonky weather that they might be expecting. I I was looking ahead a little bit uh, uh, earlier in the day, and it didn't look like it, but but I don't know. There might be some rain tonight. I don't know. But 6-10 is uh, the scheduled first pitch tonight. White Sox, Guardians at Progressive Field. And you'll hear all of it here on MMS. We'll get out of here a couple minutes early. Uh, make way for uh, Hamming, Rosie, and the whole gang to get you over there. If you listen to us on iHeartRadio, tell me where you do that on the app. If you do it from out of state, I'd like to know where our Bureau Chiefs are. Sean is in Indianapolis. Watch the eclipse from there yesterday. Holly and Paul are in Phoenix. I got another Lindy Corn commercial from uh, Roger. Uh, he's, I love him. <laughs> I'm starting to think she's making these up. Um, Roger listens to the show in East Amherst, New York. This is suburban Buffalo. We have a couple of suburban Buffalo bureau chiefs. We have Butch in North Tonawanda, which is not far away from East Amherst. But Lindy Corn, of course, is the um, – what kind of lawyer is she again? Not personal injury. She's like a uh, uh, employment discrimination, yeah, discrimination attorney. Lawyer. And she's got blue hair and the whole bit. Um, and her ads kind of get more and more demented, right? She's taking what I'm sure are real-world situations and uh, foisting them on us in very quick, quick commercials that she does. Her boss hugged her and squeezed her breasts, which felt sexual in nature, not like a greeting. Mm-hmm. She has, like, Kool-Aid blue hair. And um, is always doing new commercials for the law office of Lindy Korn. They're in Buffalo, a very prominent attorney. My client complained to HR that her boss asked her for sexual favors. And when she said no, he said, relax, enjoy it. (laughs) Does this sound familiar? If so, call the law office of Lindy Korn. Now, do we think that happened? Yes. Okay. Yes. Relax these and enjoy things, it. Yes. Okay. Why don't you oh, think these I'm things not happen? saying I'm not saying I don't. Not saying I don't. Do you think that this one happened? Yes, I think they all happened. Oh, no, the new one. Listen. My right. client complained to her supervisor that there were swastikas on the bathroom walls, and he said, they're small and we don't have time to paint. Does this sound familiar? If so, call the law office of Lindy Corn. 
I like how she goes, does this sound familiar? Okay. Remember when I, you were I at think, work and somebody said there's swastikas in the bathroom? I think this happened. I don't think the tagline, does this sound familiar, <laughs> is always appropriate she needs in to every mix situation. That up. Yeah. Yeah. Hugged her. So we're moving from. But there are it, familiar but, situations where there are probably similar things happening. So maybe it is the right thing to do because there, you know, there there's probably situations where there's other hateful uh, remarks written yeah. on a bathroom, and they go, "Ah, we don't, ah, we don't worry about that." You think she's tweaking them a little bit, maybe? I don't think she's tweaking anything. Really? I don't think so. I don't think you need to. Somebody came to her and said that there are swastikas in the bathroom. Now you could absolutely believe that. Mm-hmm. The response from her boss was, "They're small, and we don't have time to paint." Well, that's why it became a lawsuit. Because if the guy goes, "Oh, I'll take care of that right away," yeah, then they're gonna go, "Well, that was the right thing to do." You're saying without the that, boss, there's no commercial. But the boss goes, "Yeah, hey, there's little swastikas. Just yeah. a little, a little, little bit of racism ain't so bad, right? <laughs> a little bit of white power." Ain't going to be a problem. Anti-Semitism. Yeah. yeah. Well, Lindy Corn keeps cranking them out, and she's got a style that's all her own. Like I said, she's got that bright blue hair. The woman's like 81 years. I don't know how old she I is. Think she's 81. She's not a young woman. I don't, really? You don't think so? She 81 looks, seems a little high. She looks very wrinkly. How yeah. old do you think Lindy Corn is? Tans. Tans. You could Tans be right. Tans wrinkly. Uh, Lindy Corn. She takes a holistic approach to relationships in the workplace. Mm, I'd love to know. 65 years as a lawyer. 65 years as a lawyer? That's what it says. 65 years in the business. Well, hold on then. That would make Wait. her 85. <laughs> so that's probably yeah. a misprint. Yeah. Um, she, well, went she looks to, like she could be in her 60s. I don't know about 80. I mean, she's got a very old photo that she's being... Founder of the her law office, she went to SUNY Buffalo. When did she graduate SUNY Buffalo? She has been a lawyer. 65 years old. Since 79. Yeah. Okay, so 65 years old, not yeah. 65 years in the business. That's what she wrote, 65 years in the business. She was admitted to practice law in New York State in 1979. There you go. She's been practicing there her whole life. Went to Boston University. Earned her law degree from Ohio Northern University School Whoa. of Law. I thought that was a pharmacy school. It is. They, you can get I, a JD there, too? I applied there and didn't get in. To know. the law school? To the pharmacy school oh. and probably the law school. Could you have gotten into the law school? I would say probably not if I didn't make it into the pharmacy school. Well, those are two very different uh, areas of expertise, though. That's math versus the humanities and, and psychology and well, philosophy. I good at and math. All. I mean, I'm very good at math. Do you and think that science. and you didn't get you were very good at math but didn't get into pharmacy school? Math it's more science than math. Well, I mean that's pretty intertwined, but if you're good at math, it stands to reason. Like I'm terrible at math, right? I hated I, I wish I was great at that stuff because I come from a family of people who are just phenomenal at stuff. I, I'm so jealous of people who have a beautiful mind like that. They understand math and they 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 have a uh a depth and breadth of knowledge in the sciences. I, I wouldn't be doing this nonsense. You know, I would love to be one of those people. But, like, I took my LSATs because I thought, well, you know, early 90s, everybody was like, yeah, let's be a lawyer. You take your LSATs? No. Why would I take my LSATs? Because you said you probably could have gotten into the law school. No, I said I probably wouldn't have gotten into oh, the law Oh, wouldn't school. have gotten in. Yeah. Listen, if Lindy Corn can do it, I we think should all take the LSAT do. now. I'll take it. <laughs> Who knows what that looks like now? The, the way the way colleges are now, you might not even need an LSAT. Uh, you might need, not even need a JD anymore to practice law. What the hell do I know? Lindy is the proud mother of two daughters. Recently became a grandmother, and has a chocolate lab. Her hobbies include walking trips. All right, what so does she. That mean? Well, I don't know the local Buffalo area, but it says she likes the Dingle Way. What? Is that you Buffalonians will have to tell me. I, I Context clues. I assume maybe that's a, a trail near Buffalo. The Coswold Trail and the Dingle Way. Sounds like an 80s sex romp rom-com. The Dingle the Way. The Dingle Way with Sean Penn and Phoebe Cates. <laughs> It's a long-distance trail around the Dingle Peninsula in Ireland. Ah, So not Buffalo. She's an international traveler. Yeah. 
I was going to say, if she's given out her coordinates, she's pissed off at least one or two dudes for sexual assault. And she's telling right. them to find her. Come find me on the dingle yeah. way. Right. I'm sue your ass. <laughs> dingle down. <laughs> you try that on me. You better not hug me. Yeah. Well, okay. Next time I'm in Ireland, I'm going to walk the dingle way. I'm going to tell you guys all about it. Dude, quick aside with this music. Yep. On St. Patrick's Day, we went to a, like, just like a local Irish pub. And they had a dude playing. That was here? Oh, uh, that was in New York. This is in New York City. Yep. One dude playing a violin or a fiddle or whatever makes this noise. This is a violin? A fiddle. fiddle Same yeah. thing, yeah. Okay. And he was singing a song that I was certain he was making up as he went along. Like, the way that he was singing, there were a lot of and thens. He's probably just in drunk song. and Irish. Well, it was some song about uh, my grandfather was killed by molasses. Mm -hmm. And he's like going on and on and on. And I'm like, there's no way this is a real song. And I Googled it and it was 100% real. The Great Molasses Flood. Yes. In Boston. It was like, yes, it was like a real event. And I guess a bunch of Irish Bostonians made this hymn. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And I was listening to it like there's three million gallons of molasses like killed people in Boston. But I, I did not, I mean, once I read up on it, I was like, oh, I remember hearing about that. But the way it was just him, and I had seen he'd been drinking, I'm like, <laughs> he is fooling all of us. He's making this up one line at a time. Like, he's on whose line is it anyway? My right grandfather now. died of molasses. Yes, that's exactly what it sounded like. Yeah. He, like, wasn't playing his violin at the time or fiddle. He was, like, stomping his foot and, like, clapping. Yeah, you've got to keep the beat. <laughs> It was insane. They couldn't even find their asses Something in the molasses tank. And, th- and then my grandmother was sad. Yeah. Like, this isn't real. Nobody writes songs like this. You'd be surprised how bad Irish people can be at making music. I see that. <laughs> they invented you too. the bagpipes, uh-huh. for crying out loud. Right. Well, that's Scottish. Scottish. Yeah, that is oh. Scottish. Yep. Not the Irish, Bill. I thought that Don't I- throw the bagpipes at us. I feel like the Irish use the bagpipes a lot, too. They might, but it's Scottish in All nature. Right, well, same thing. I believe. Scottish and Irish are the same. I'll die on that. You <laughs> you shut your whore mouth. <laughs> They're both below us English. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> All right. Oh, I got a letter from Al Marcinek, who is our bureau oh. chief out in Carleton, Pennsylvania. He's at Marcinek Farms out there. If you've been with this show for any length of time, you might remember he had Terry the Goat, who would pick... The NFL games for us week to week for many uh, four or five seasons here on the show. Terry the Goat passed away not long ago. Alan, please let Mary know. Uh, Al uh, messaged me while I was in Florida last week, and he said, please let uh, Mary know that Mayor the Goat had a kid last night. She is once again a goat grandmother. And so um, he he did name one of his – I'll show you the the photo here. He – well – he did name uh, one of his goats Mare the Goat mm-hmm. after our own uh, Mary Santora. Because I used to open the show saying no babies, and he said you might not have a baby, but you'd definitely have a kid. Get it? Kid goat. Yeah. Al Marcinet. Who says they're not funny out in Carlton, Pennsylvania? Yeah, he sent me a picture with one of his goats with the eclipse glasses on, too. Oh, my so- gosh. There's my grandbaby. <laughs> So even the uh, uh, taking uh, nothing but care during the eclipse for his livestock. We got to, speaking of your animals, you know, maybe you're at work all day long, right? Maybe you loathe the fact that you can't be home uh, with your furry pals while you're at work. Uh, We're getting constant emails, you know, uh, from the company about new things that they're working on. And uh, we got one this morning. For the pet radio channel on the iHeartRadio app. Did you see that email? Did you I read it? I must have missed that one. Pet radio. Mm-hmm. National Pet Day is this Thursday. And so apparently the Brain Trust has been working very uh, long and hard hours on pet radio. That while you're gone, uh, here's what they allegedly Uh, They've uh, created binaural beats and calming tones and white noise that will help calm the pets at night or while their humans are away. A channel created to help your pets relax. It's called Pet Radio on the iHeartRadio app. Now, I only mention this because I've heard from 
I think we all have uh, no shortage of people who listen to this show to calm and relax themselves, right? Sure, maybe not animals, but humans. We're just a different kind of animal. And uh, when they turn this on, there's a calm relaxation that washes over them. At least that's what I've been told. And I take people at their word. But while you're clicking around that iHeartRadio app, uh, maybe you've left just by virtue of uh, your, your job. Maybe you're a single person and gone all day, and maybe you don't board your pet. They're just at home being bored. They can listen to pet radio on the iHeartRadio app. Hashtag not an ad, but uh, just to uh, get that out there. That's what they're working on. These are the, the big breakthroughs there over on the app. Can't figure out how to not get commercials playing in the middle of me talking, but pet radio from the mines there at the uh, high floors. Probably the people who are a couple of floors above Mary Santora. Well, sales is downstairs. We had egg salad Probably the people today. who are a couple of floors below Mary Santora. You had what? Egg salad sandwiches. <sighs> <laughs> you say that like it was a big treat for the floor. I mean, it was good. Everybody had egg salad sandwiches. Fart some, floor now. Yeah, well, I bet bakery, that smelled good. Some bake, baked baked breads or something, I think it was called. Um, they had little sliders of your choices <clears throat> were egg salad or tuna salad. <clears throat> oh, so they're just trying to get, like, everybody out of there and... So they try. They need I mean, to fumigate really the joint. Good. And then there was like it was like a healthier spread. Not that mayonnaise based salads are healthy, but everything on the side was like fruits and vegetables and stuff. Mm-hmm. It was really good though. <laughs> <laughs> that was my second lunch. <laughs> second lunch. Well, was when first was lunch. first lunch? First lunch. When and what? Well, I have been holding out a bit. First lunch, I had a meeting with a talent agency today. Uh huh. Which was pretty exciting. Uh-huh. I didn't want to say anything before That's the meeting. That's very cool. And also, I haven't been on air in two weeks. Was this a lunch that they took you to? Yes. Okay. This was a lunch that they took me to. Yep. Um, this is a management company, mm-hmm. and we went to a spot that's like between our offices, iHeart, and where their offices are a little bit further into Midtown. And, and this is talking about them representing you. Correct. Yeah. This is talking about getting a manager, mm-hmm. not an agent, yep. a manager, which I did learn today is I knew managers and agents were different. I thought they were all at the same company. They can like be. Like I thought, um, the way this person made it sound is that they 90% of the time are not. That you'll have a management agent, like a management company and a t- talent agency. Right. And that your agent comes from an agency and your manager comes from a management company yeah they can and, i mean well, yeah because i was like i thought the big ones like caa or like like the big even like with actors and stuff like that i thought it was all under one roof those are and, talent agencies and he was like most of the time it is not but anyway we and had lunch. the manager gets five percent the agent gets ten yes big difference is the agent's the one chasing the money the yep. agent's going to bring you everything that pays the best hey here's what i want you to do so i can make the most money off of it mm-hmm. and the manager's like hey that's probably not a good look <laughs> that's <laughs> yeah. not going to be the best thing they are you. managing <laughs> your career <laughs> yes the agent is trying to get themselves paid correct yep. well like he's like the manager is more of your friend the yep. manager is the one looking out being like I don't know about taking this tv opportunity or you know this might not be the best guest appearance on a podcast or whatever um and then the agents are just throwing whatever they can at the wall to make you take everything to make them more money Mm -hmm. essentially but we had first lunch today um and we did the little dance of like oh what are you gonna have and he was like i don't know i was thinking about a salad and then he was like man was it just you and one other person or they bring the whole team out okay me and the one who is interested in managing me yep and um Oh, the actual guy, not just somebody the act- from the. No, okay. the actual guy. It's actually kind of a crazy story. I did. I picked up a very, very last minute show in Brooklyn a while back. And, oh, this was the night that I saw Dave Chappelle and mm-hmm. Chris Rock and Fifty Cent. So that Brooklyn show that I picked up last minute, um, I picked it up literally like walking home from work. I got a text message that was like, "Hey, can you be here tonight?" And then this guy walks in, and uh, he's wearing a Cleveland Cavaliers hoodie. And so he and I are chatting it up about the Cavs and being from Cleveland and I didn't think twice about it and then like two weeks later I got an email from him and he's like from like official letterhead from this management company 
and he was like, hey, you know, it was great meeting you the other day and talking. I, did, I noticed you didn't have any representation, and I'm wondering if my company can help in that at all. And um, we set up a time to meet, and we went to what's called the Brooklyn Diner, which I guess is like a very famous restaurant. <gasps> Macaulay Culkin's brother was there. <laughs> Kieran? You know, he has a few siblings. The one in Succession. Yeah, Kieran Culkin. That's cool. He walked in, mm -hmm. and we're mid-conversation, and the, the manager looks, and he goes, big celeb sighting, don't look now. And I was like, who is it? And he goes, oh, not oh. Macaulay Culkin. Uh, I go, okay? <laughs> it doesn't really. He goes, it's one of his brothers. I can't remember his this name. This is on 57th or 43rd? 57th. Okay. So two blocks from the radio station. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we did the dance of, like, are we going to get a salad, or what are we going to have, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, I don't know. Their burgers are really good. So he got a burger. I got a patty. Now, why is that a dance? Because I think when you're, like, having a business lunch, it's you don't want to have something too gluttonous. Or sloppy. Or sloppy, right. But he got a burger, and he's like, I, I don't know if that sways you one way or the other. I was like, I was getting a patty melt no matter what you ordered. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I'm not going to try to be something I'm not right now. Um, but that was first lunch. And what time was that? I don't want to talk about it. It was really early. No. So it was no, breakfast. It was, it was bang bang. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they were they were yeah, she, back to back. She, back she back. ate a patty melt and then walked in and grabbed an egg salad sandwich on her way to the studio. That's uh, you don't want to talk about it. Oh, I see. You should have first a manager uh, lunch habits. Yeah. yeah. No, first lunch was at uh, we met at eleven thirty, and then second lunch was before the show at two. Oh. <laughs> well, at least you squeezed a couple hours in there. Hey, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. I was excited. Now, well, you have a menager. That's the person who arranges all your threesomes. I will not. I don't need that. Oh. She can do that me. herself. Mm -hmm. That's a different, a different Google Doc. Mm -hmm. And so, it, was that a was that a um, a positive meeting? Yeah, I mean, he asked me why we were talking, and he reps some pretty big comics. I was surprised that the, not surprised, but like when he started naming some of his clients, I was like, oh damn, like this is legit. And I had asked a couple uh, other comics about this particular agency and they were like, no, they're they're like, they're good. They're not, you know, UTA or CA. They're not like the top three, but they've been around forever. They're real good people. Perhaps um, you've heard of Andy Richter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> No, but we left it at, like, because he asked me why I didn't have anybody to begin with. And I was like, to be 100% honest with you, I've not met a manager that can do anything for me that I'm not already doing for myself. I was like, I've been kind of holding out for an agent because I haven't, I mean, as far as stand-up goes, well, I'm going to give you 10% of the $1,000 I'm making. Like, yeah, I don't have too much sense, money. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I was like, I'm already booking 30 weekends a year. Like, and so I kind of asked him, I said, which leads me to the question, like, what would you do for me if I don't, you know, like, how do we, what would you guys be bringing to the table kind of a thing? And he said it would be more of- More lunch. More lunch. More lunches. As many patty melts as you want. Mm -hmm. um, other stuff. Literary, like if you want to write a book or if you want to be cast in movies and commercials and TV and, you know, if you want to do voiceover acting, which I've talked about wanting to do, he goes, I have the ins to those types of things or writing jobs. Those all come through agencies. He's like, so while you're doing great with your own stand-up, this would more or less be supplementing your stand-up. Other ways to make money in entertainment yeah. while also boosting comedy for you. Like, we get you a voiceover job on a massive cartoon and then people are now buying tickets to see the voice of the jellyfish. Right. You know, whatever, you know what Ladies I mean? Ladies and gentlemen, you know where's the voice of the jellyfish. <laughs> right, right, right. And read her so. new book, I'm the Real Jellyfish. Oh, hey. tentacles, yes or no. That's no. right. The jelly behind the fish, <laughs> a cod pass story. <laughs> oh. But yeah, so um, we left it at like no decisions today. Take a couple days to think about it, and then I'll email you like a formal proposal. That's cool. Next week. Yeah, yeah that's it's really very cool. cool. So it's it was a exciting. fruitful interaction, but with no actual fruit. Uh, no, there was no well, fruit. Time, I had yeah, onions takes, on my patty melt. It takes time for fruit to <laughs> grow, you bloom know? and blossom, yeah, and, blossom and, yeah, and grow ripe. whatever they ripen. ripen, whatever they do, whatever fruit yeah. does. There's no way to know. I uh, I got to take a break here. Hey, want to go to see 21 Pilots? They are um, uh, coming through. And uh, they're going to be playing uh, where? The Romo Fijo. Yeah, September 28th is that show. If you're into 20, 21 Pilots, it's Saturday night. 
I'll have a pair for you coming back. 35192 for anything else, and we'll be back. The Alan Cox Show on 100.7 WMMS. And-
Thank you. Happy tastes good. This is The Buzzard. From the Bath Authority Studios. The Buzzard. The home of the Buzzard. buzzard. This is 100.7 WMMS. Cleveland. All right, it's so a return of 21 pilots. If you want to go see them, the show is going to happen at the Romo Fijo on Saturday, September the 28th. You can go to rocketmortgagefieldhouse.com for tickets, info, and everything else. Not sure who's with them, but maybe they'll have that uh, information there. But these two tickets for you if you're caller 10, too, for 21 pilots. Good luck. Caller 10, 216-578-1007 or 800 348 1007 Press the yellow button to begin enjoying your Allen. What is an Allen? The Allen Cox Show. On 100.7 WMMS. Six ten tonight is that uh, second game, Guardians-White Sox around the corner at Progressive Field. So we'll dip out a couple minutes early. This is the second of three. They will play them again. But tomorrow at 610, I think tomorrow's game is going to be on WTAM because we will have the Cavaliers for you uh, here on the buzzard as they get into their last home stretch of the regular season. The Cavs will play uh, Memphis tomorrow night at 7. They'll host the Pacers on Friday night and then Sunday afternoon, 1 o'clock tip-off uh, against the Charlotte Hornets. And... Um, the Cavs have lost three in a row, knocked down a bit in the standings. Yeah, I think they're sixth seed right now. They are fifth right fifth, now. Fifth, yep. Okay. Below the Knicks, Magic, Bucks, and Celtics. So, Cavs basketball tomorrow night, but tonight, 6 10, Guardians, White Sox uh, here on the Buzzard. We'll get you uh, right into the first pitch there shortly after 10 o'clock. You do not want to F around. In a country where people are so heavily armed. Oh, uh, just to be clear, I'm talking about this one. Yeah, I knew. I knew what you were talking about. Thank you. Especially in Texas, uh, where, boy, you just, you got to keep your head on a swivel. So they were able to unravel what this was about. There was a guy who was robbing a couple at a gas station. And so a witness, a bystander, uh, drew... And killed the guy. But they determined that the guy who was holding up the couple were staging it as part of an immigration scam to get a visa. And my mind immediately, before I saw the story about like where this was a scam or whatever, my mind immediately went to somebody doing a TikTok prank got shot and killed. Mm -hmm. Right? Because somebody's always filming something for the lulls. And in Texas... You know, anywhere, let's say anywhere. I mean, this happened in Texas, but anywhere. People just walking around packing, a lot of states, you don't need a permit, open carry. You don't know what the hell is going on. And this guy thought he was doing, uh, helping everybody out. He goes, hey, look at that. That guy's, he could have just as easily uh, 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 packed up and took off, but they were staging it. I didn't understand the immigration scam. But this attorney... Yeah, I don't get how that... Kind of explains it. What is, like, the person qualifies for a work permit while they're waiting for a resolution of the case. So they say, okay, so what would happen if somebody beat me up or if if I was a victim of domestic violence? People don't realize the big mess they are getting into by lying and making things up. So if you get... If you're the victim of a crime... This is what they were trying to do. These two people told this dude to pretend to rob them at this gas station. And as the guy finished the robbery, uh, ran away. And a bystander shot him and killed him. And so then uh, the couple has to come clean and go, we were, we were trying to stage this robbery because if you were the victim of a crime, you could file a report with the cops which in itself would be filing a false report. And, you know, if you get, so that's one count of something. 
and then you could apply for a visa while that, you know, these cases move so slowly, especially in immigration, any kind of immigration case uh, moves at a glacial pace. It's like that uh, molasses flood yeah. that that Irish guy was singing to Mary about. I made up. <laughs> and uh, these people are like, oh, well, we'll file a report that we were victims of a robbery and then we'll get a work permit. This is how great it is. Some people will tell you. This is how great it is uh, to be in these United States. They go, hey, we're having a hard time getting a work visa. Could you just come over here? They're still trying to do it the right way up. in a way. You know, people are always like, I don't care if they come to America to do it the right way. Well, they were trying to follow trying one of the visa. Loophole, loopholes. Is a loophole? America, a yeah, yeah, yeah we're a loophole. You don't love taxes. They haven't closed them. They, they, they like loopholes when it comes to taxes and stuff. They go, oh, you'd be dumb not to use the loophole. That's right. It makes you very smart mm-hmm. if you find a way not to pay taxes. But if you try to find a way, wait. America, America, America. Dude, you understand? America, America, America. My point is America. America's first. So they were... Uh, that was the whole uh, uh, plan there. They got text messages from the guy's phone between him and the guy that they had asked to fake rob them. When you're done, make all of it look real. One of the texts said. It did look real. It looked really it real. It looked real. Like that. I mean, he nailed it. Yeah. It looked like a real. So he did exactly what they asked him to do. They said that these same two people staged numerous other robberies going back to last year. Really Helping people get, oh, they had like a little cottage yeah. industry. So plenty of other people got visas this way. One took place at a Northeast Houston gas station earlier this year where he pretended to rob the cashier. And so, you know, these immigration lawyers, that's going to make it sticky too if you're an immigration lawyer because there are a lot of people who... You know, it's not cheap, obviously, but there's a lot of people who are trying to do it very much by the book. But you're kind of bobbing and weaving, too, with this kind of stuff. We're like, now you've told me everything you need to tell me, yes? Yes, yes. There's nothing you're leaving out? No, no. Have you ever been the victim of a crime? (laughs) Yes, I have. I've been held up every month at the same gas station. It just keeps happening. You'd think I'd find another place to fill up. Yeah. Yeah. Snake every week. (laughs) (laughs) Dude. (laughs) So, yeah, these, um, you know, they got into trouble. But, again, you just don't know some dude, because all these guys, there's plenty, not all of them, but a lot of them, like, yeah, I pack it, but I hope I don't ever have to use it. They can't wait to use it. They're dying to use it. And I don't ever want to. This wanna... is the greatest day of this guy's life. It's weird that people want to hurt other people and they have those kind of fantasies. I saw Civil War last night. Oh, how was that? It was really good, but the violence in it isn't cartoony or spectacular. Yeah, it's depressing. It's really sad. It's very visceral. It's very honest, and it's just... It, like everybody dying. There's they, they don't really describe the politics of the situation. It's kind of implied who the guy is that you know the the tyrannical yeah. president and everything like that. Nick Offerman plays him in the movie. Yeah, that's and pretty he, wild. And he, he doesn't have a lot of lines or anything like that. It's 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 not uh, that kind of movie. It it is front lines of a war. A nation at war with itself, and there's all these different factions, so you never really know who is what most right. of the time. But it's really jarring. I don't like movies like that. It's it's so good though. Like it's so it's very powerful because it it really just shows like the horrors of war, and it just makes me sad that people are willing to do that to other humans over stuff that it 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 just doesn't seem like it's worth hurting anybody over. Hmm. But then but there's people that are, there's a lot of people that are, they're, they're like so excited to hurt somebody over or something. Well, there's a lot of messed up people in the world. Yeah. But well, and the they spent too, all that money on all that gear. Right. I mean, you can't just I have it hanging see. in your shed mm-hmm. or in your bunker. You got to get out there and use it. I feel like a lot of times, too, they're not brainwashed, but 
they're led to believe that whatever they're fighting for is the right cause or will Absolutely. ultimately end up good. You know what yeah. I mean? So it's not necessarily that they're – I'm sure there are plenty of people who are eager to kill another human being, but I think it's also – there's a lot of exterior factors too. Mm-hmm. I wonder how you – I wonder what the demarcation line is for brainwashing. What constitutes being brainwashed? Because nobody Wait. thinks they are. I mean, yeah. b- but people go, oh, he's brainwashed. But that is a thing. Mm-hmm. And so I wonder, I wonder what, the, what the specifics of that are. I mean, I'm curious. I, I don't know exactly how it goes, but I, definitely what I went through as, as a child and, and what I was taught, they didn't think of it as brainwashing because they're like, oh, we're teaching them truth. That's indoctrination. But, it, but it's indoctrination. And how different is indoctrination from brainwashing? I don't think it's very different at all. But that's children. I mean, I grew up Catholic, too. Yeah. And so when you, when you take kids and religion and whatever, I mean, parents are just teaching them what they learned. It's like a mm-hmm. chain. You know, this is how we grew up and this is how you're going to grow and blah, blah, blah. And everybody, you, you know, you get to the age of reason or beyond or become an adult and you figure it out for yourself. But I mean adults. Right. Grown people walking around. Um. But it's a good movie. Is it? It's it not was, too long, is it? No, it's not long at all. It's okay. it's under two hours. All right, and it moves. You know, there's there's a lot of different set pieces, and they they move it pretty quickly. It's it's very very tense. Like it is a tense movie. It's got an ending though, Mary. So I was gonna like say, that. I, I like have to assume ending. it has yeah. a vague ending. No, it's it's not very vague at all. No, oh, like, okay. It's very specific about uh, <laughs> uh, what happens. In, uh, all right. But I'm so I, bummed that I really, I, I really liked it, and I, I would uh, say if you want like an adult, thr- like I, don't, I don't even want to call it an action movie because it's more of a thrill, and like I don't know, it's, it's almost just like really a good. faux documentary. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, but shot that way. It looks like. I mean, it's it not. It's it, it's not shot by like, it's not like shaky cam or like a, a journalist is doing all the filming. Like it's it's filmed like a a movie. But you're following journalists that are documenting what's happening. They go from New York, and the highways are all destroyed, so they have to go all the way out to uh, Pittsburgh and then back down to try and get to Washington, D.C. Oh, I see. And it's real good. In I don't want to give hey, too much away. Hey, you got any bullets? Yeah. You inside of bullets? <laughs> there was a part where they, oh, go, no. they go under an overpass, and it says, go Steelers, and I go, boo. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But it was I, it was an interesting film and it, it was really well done. It's opens on very Friday, intense, yeah. yeah. Very, very intense. Well, I well like, acted. Too. I like Alex Garland a lot. Yeah. I like that dude. He does a lot of good work. Well, he did X Machina. Yeah. I never saw Annihilation. I know people love Annihilation. Of, a lot of people didn't love Annihilation. Oh, I love yeah. Annihilation. So, oh, come on. So I think you'll like this one a lot. It was like I said, the violence is very authentic and ve- it, it feels like you are in a war zone. And they actually killed people for the movie. <laughs> I mean, you know, <laughs> they got they Fat Damon and uh, Kirsten Dunst too. Wow, well. and he's always menacing. Yeah, I'm so pissed. I dragged my feet, and now Dune is not in IMAX anymore because there's new movies coming in. Yeah, right. We're hitting the summer I'm season. I'm so mad because I still haven't seen Dune two, and now I'm gonna have to watch it on. Mary, are you ready? A ready. regular size screen. Oh. The indignity. How could you? The, You're the worst millionaire in- ever. <laughs> Shut up. Why don't you build an IMAX? The <laughs> indignity. Um, because my wife already thinks I, I, I say I too much, Bill. Ah, oh, I gotcha. Uh, I so, statements. The yeah. movie I'm talking about, by the way, is called Civil War. It's, Civil uh, War, yes. Alex Garland, Kirsten Dunst. And, it's uh, the biggest movie that A24 has done so far. Like the the biggest budget movie. It's getting really done. good reviews. It's very good. Yeah. It and again, it is pretty intense. Mm-hmm. Now, and, if you make sure that you uh, uh, don't uh, mistype it, because if you come up with CC's War, that's the documentary about the pizza place, I believe. Am I correct on that? That wasn't a war. That was a (laughs) bloodbath. It was so much fighting over a place. I don't know how it stays in business, but somehow it does. Is it still in business? Yeah, we saw one in Florida. CC's Pizza. It's a a place (laughs) in the country. Yeah. (laughs) 
you'll see in Civil War, maybe not. <laughs> oh boy. That's they, the, the one thing they, they saw they, the peninsula off the rest of the mainland. No, they just don't go into how it like the the Western forces is the main uh, group that they're following, right? And it's California and Texas teamed up. Oh, but they yeah. don't explain how that. Happened. I was gonna say, yeah. okay, first of all, you already lost me, right? right? Well, it's it's just because they're they're trying to make it kind of ambiguous. They just they they're just showing that the country's fractured. There's all these different factions, and yeah, then there's a lot of people just sitting it out. But there, there, there's something happened with this, uh, this president that made them team up, and they go, okay, we got to stop this guy, and uh, they got to. They oh, they've teamed up down. against him. Yeah, I see. Yeah. but there are people on his side too. I have to assume in this. Yes, yeah. we have there a lot people- of people in this country way into yeah. fascism. Mm-hmm. All right, and they're not the first. You students of history. Yawn at those kinds of things. Hey, do you see Mary got kicked out of a Goodwill? Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> I did in Indiana. That's the hardest okay. Goodwill to get kicked out of, too. And Dude. why are you in a Goodwill? Listen, I didn't go there on my own volition. My brother was vacationing in Indianapolis from Louisville with his daughters. His twin daughters are 10. They're super into thrift stores right now. Thrift stores are like the coolest thing ever. I don't know if this is going on on TikTok or what, but like thrift stores and vintage stores, they're really, really into. So we went to a couple vintage stores, which are just expensive thrift stores. I don't know if you've been to a vintage store lately, but it's a place where a a T-shirt that looks like it came from uh, Urban Outfitters is $54 because it says Rolling Stones on it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it's vintage. Yeah. So we went to a couple vintage stores, and it was all obviously too expensive for a 10-year-old. So we went to a Goodwill. Okay? And I'm looking. There's huge. It's a giant Goodwill in Indianapolis. And we're, I'm looking through. I grabbed a couple dresses. I usually get, like, sundresses and stuff like that from a thrift store because they're usually less than $10. You know, it's just something to throw on over a bathing suit or something. And um, I had, like, four dresses, and I walked over to this one lady, an associate, and I was like, hey, I don't see any guys, like, fitting rooms. Like, do you guys have any fitting rooms? And she was like, no, we closed them all down after COVID. I was like, oh, so we're not allowed to try anything on. You just kind of got to buy it. And she, like, looked around, like, looked over her shoulders. And at first I was like, oh, she's about to say something racist. Like, what is she about? Because that's, like, the only time you see an older lady look over their shoulders. Um, But she was like, listen. Take those in the bathroom. You didn't see my name tag, and I didn't see you. I said, okay. So I took them in the bathroom. What the hell does that mean? That means, like, I'll just go try them on and don't tell anybody, basically. So I took them in the bathroom, and I was trying them on. And, I mean, I was probably in there, like, 10 minutes or so. And um, No, not a single one of them. Um, But I'm going to come out of the bathroom, and I have the four items with me, and this other lady a much younger lady bursts in through the door and goes did you pay for those items and i was like no i just was trying them on and she goes well this is not a fitting room and i need you to leave and i was like i was just i didn't see a fitting room so i just brought them in here to try them on so that way i knew if they fit before we bought them she goes you're trying to steal from us and i don't appreciate you lying about it like freaking out on me i was like lady i'm not trying to steal i just wanted to try them on and she was like, that's it. You know better. You're a grown woman. Get out of this store. You're not welcome here. You're never allowed to come back. Like, she is <laughs> losing her mind. You are not me. welcome in the Indiana Goodwill. Goodwill. And she so you didn't, this- throw the, the, you didn't throw the other lady under the bus? No, because I didn't think that that was a nice thing to do. Because she was she had to be in her 70s. And I'm like, if Understood, but it, it could have been a simple, like, I completely misunderstood your colleague. Well, no, no. She kind of pointed me over here, but I must have misunderstood her. But if you weren't going to buy anything, who cares? Yeah. She's 70 years old, probably. She's in her 70s. She was an old lady. So my thing was, if you're that old, you either want that job because you love it or you need that job. And if this old lady's working at Goodwill, I'm not going to get her fired or get her in trouble. You know, like I never I the fact that I was there to begin with doesn't matter. I'm never going to go back there again. So I didn't think it was worth it. Well, you're not allowed. You're banned. Well, yeah. <laughs> banned. I'm saying in general, I didn't think it was worth it to get that other lady in trouble. I see. 
But over I some Rolling Stones t-shirts. Yeah, over a couple dresses. Mm-hmm. But this lady was furious, okay? And my brother had his MAGA hat on that day. So I come out. She's throwing me out. She's screaming, there's a sign posted. You know better than this. You wow. Think? And this is a younger she's, woman, you said? She's probably in her 40s, younger than the 70-year-old. Right. But still, that's not old. She's not much older than me. No. And thief, thief, and my brother has his MAGA hat on, and he has his shirt off trying on a shirt in the middle of the Goodwill. And I'm like, we look like the worst people on the you planet. You look like the most Indiana <laughs> people that, like, right. you look fine. He's got his shirt off. He's got his belly out trying on a different Hawaiian shirt. I'm getting <laughs> thrown out, being called a thief. And um, those two are exchanging something. And he, I heard him say, like, on my way out, like, hey, we're not from here. Sorry. Our, in, our well, Goodwill has a fitting room. She didn't try to – she's not trying to steal, blah, blah, blah. But the lady Where like, I'm from, we can out. try them out on the roof. <laughs> Basically. But, yeah, she, like, followed me out and – um. I had to just sit outside while my nieces and my sister-in-law shot. My brother came out with me, and he's laughing so hard. He's like, dude, I've never seen a grown person thrown out of a place before. Of course. Like, he's like, for not being a indignant. A goodwill. Or like, yes, like not. He's like, you weren't causing problems. You weren't fighting you with were anybody. You were trying to steal. I wasn't trying to steal. That's According to that lady, you're going to. I would like to hear her side of the story because you said you're not trying to steal. But we don't know. No There's two sides stealing. to every story. She saw someone committing a crime. And every said, single person, every store. single person who gets caught says mm-hmm. they're not trying to steal. But it's, but it's also not like you weren't trying to spear it away a coach bag. No, it was a seven dollar dress that someone else probably died in. Every like, dollar what, counts at Goodwill. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I posted on my Instagram and I put up a poll: like, would you have t- tattled on the other associate, or would you have just left quietly, like I did? And um. It was almost 50-50. Really? People, it's not a high-stakes yes. situation. I mean. But I couldn't believe that that many people were willing to be like, this old woman did me wrong. <laughs> yeah. get, her, get her in trouble. Gladys like, did great. me dirty. Yeah. Wow. So I'm now banned from the Indianapolis Goodwill. Wow. <laughs> I didn't take my picture or anything, but I definitely You know what that sounds back. like to me, Bill? A lack of goodwill. Mm. Oh, God. I'm going to break. Hey, you want to send me a text, 35192, alancoxshow.com. You'll see pictures flying through the air, and we'll be back. The Alan Cox Show. On our free iHeartRadio app and your favorite smart device. Just tell it to play the Alan Cox Show.
All right, comedian Eric Andre is going on the road. The Eric Andre Show will come to Cleveland to play the world-famous Agora on Saturday, June 15th, agoracleveland.com for details on any and all shows that are going to be coming through there. Uh, No shortage of great, great uh, productions coming to the Agora. Eric Andre Show. I don't know what form it's going to take, but he's a funny dude. So a couple of tickets here for you if you're caller 10, June 15th, uh, 216-578-1007 to grab these or 800-348-1007. You may not like what he has to say. Let's hear what the idiot has to say. But you're going to love what he doesn't have to say. Love. Alan Cox on 100.7 WMMS. We got hot celebrity gossip with Perez Bilton in a matter of minutes. We were gone last week, and it was the um, the lack of hot celebrity gossip was palpable. Yeah, even in Florida where we were, I could. It was like um, uh, Wednesday rolled around, and we were inside because Wednesday was the one day where there was just bad weather. Every other day, we just had beautiful, stereotypical Florida weather, but it wasn't like blowing your brains out, right? It wasn't 97 degrees. It was awesome. It was like high 70s, low 80s, and dynamite. And, um, but one day, that Wednesday, were huge storms coming through, and so we were inside, we're just kicking around, having some pops, watching some TV, reading some books, whatever. And, you know, same time zone. So I felt a disturbance in the force around 4.30, and I couldn't figure out what it was. And it finally occurred to me. No goss. No, yeah, no goss. No goss. That's yeah, right. Well, hot, I'll tell you what. Goss pouring into your ears. I cannot tell you how pleased I was when we got on Frontier Airlines and saw that they use Airbus airplanes. I was like, whew. No Boeing. No Boeing. We got on, on board, and I was like. I was on a Boeing when I went out to wherever Kansas City yeah there's a lot of them but now when you know when you're making um, airline reservations you can weed those out and we you. had problems too like the power went out on the plane and then they're like yeah we don't know what's going on we're gonna figure out uh, why the power's not working and they you're like okay now we're going well we didn't pay to all sit together so we had two seats in one row one seat in another so Nora and, and I Nora by herself <laughs> yeah no we sat her in the window seat, and then I sat in the middle, and Gwen was in the back. I'm like, you could use the the solo time, right? So she tells me later on, she's sitting there. It's a full flight. We're going to Florida. The woman sitting next to Gwen goes, you're Alan Cox's wife, right? <laughs> and she goes, yeah. Check you know you know how my, you know how yeah. Gwen loves being referred to as Alan Cox's wife. Mm-hmm. And this woman goes, yeah, years ago, Alan was having this cleavage contest, and my husband sent mine in, and Alan said, well, those could solve world hunger. Which I don't, I don't recall. Why wife that? Because everybody thinks that my wife is, I mean, she's <laughs> sweet, but everybody thinks that she finds me as hilarious as they do, and nothing could be further from the truth. She's got to live with me, right? She's like, I... And so Gwen was I like, I just mean out of respect. Why would you look at someone and be like, your husband said I got great knockers? Like, that's crazy. Well, I don't know. I, I don't think people even think that far. And so Gwen's like trying to be, she's like, oh, okay. Cool. She's like, she goes, this lady just puts her headphones on and starts reading a book or whatever. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, she had a book so you can trust her. Yeah, there According you go. According to your dad. That's right. Ah. Yeah. When we, um, our fl- first flight from Cleveland to New York, uh, it was like, it was like a 7 a.m. flight. It was an early one. And it wasn't an easy morning. This was what, I mean, the kid didn't get a lot of sleep. And as eight-year-olds do, test, 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 test. Every single thing was a fight from what shoes she was going to wear to how she was going to pack her bag to everything was a fight. So by the time it was time to board the plane, Brian was ready to quit our family. Mm -hmm. Where he was just like, F this whole vacation. You guys go. I don't even want to know you. I don't want to be around (laughs) you. And um, I fly so much that I got a free upgrade. That I fully planned on sitting in first class without those two. I was just gonna be like, it's my upgrade. I earned it. And he was in such a bad mood that I was like, why don't you take the first oh, class? Oh, you're so nice. <laughs> I did. Wow, look at I you. Like, I gave it to him because 
Uh, so he, he didn't can... jump out of the plane. You wanted yes. him to, yeah. And he, he'll he stay angry longer than I will. So I'm like, give him, you know, it's a two-hour flight. Give him two hours by himself with a little extra leg room and a little TV. They're going to give him free headsets. A little you know. warm cookie. He goes, they handed me a hot towel. I didn't know what to do with it. <laughs> it's the first time you Wait, he's never, never been, been handed a hot towel before? He's never been in first class. No, it's but like you go to a Japanese there. restaurant, they give you a hot towel. I don't know, oh. but I had never been handed a hot towel until I was in first class for really? the first time. Really? And I, like, mm. looked around to see what other people were doing, and the guy next to me, I, it had to have been, like, a movie scene, because everything the guy next to me did, I did. Like, he wiped his hands, and I, like, opened it and wiped his hand, and then he started to wipe his neck. I was like, I should wipe my neck. <laughs> <It was> like, <laughs> so I don't know if that's what Brian was doing, but we sat separate specifically so he didn't leave our family. <laughs> wow. Well, that was very nice of you. Yeah, I asked the lady. I was like, "Hey, I just want to I want to give him my seat. Do you have to like change it in the system at all?" And the uh flight attendant goes, "No, just let him sit there." And I was like, "Oh, I don't know. I didn't know if like you guys had names of where people are supposed to be sitting." Yeah. So, like, yeah, just trade with him. We don't care. I was like, "Oh, okay. Well, there you go." Yeah, have we were, it. we were in the pool. We flew in Friday morning, and so we're in the pool by Friday afternoon, and we're back there just kicking it, having some pops and, you know, and uh, we look up in the sky. This was on Good Friday. And I'm such a lapsed Catholic that it's not even on my radar. I'm like, oh, right. It's Easter weekend, right? Last weekend. And so we're in the pool. And we're looking up. And there's a sky rider. I'm like, oh, uh, what are they going to smell? And it's love. Oh. And I was like, oh, this is going to be one of those, like, proposals or something, right? And then it's you. But by the time you get with each subsequent letter the prior ones are already fading away mm-hmm. right yeah, so you have quick. yeah I, the sky writing is fascinating i don't i'm sure it's all coordinates and they they plug the numbers in and and then the thing shoots it out i, I don't know exactly how that works but it's pretty cool anyway he's spelling out love you jesus i was like oh, yeah. word florida baby you don't gotta write that in the sky love supposed, you jesus you say it in a prayer stupid that's closer to jesus that's why Is he's it? in the sky he's in your heart if you're doing it right he's up in the sky in florida love you jesus i, like I didn't even see the final s before the whole thing faded i don't know if he ran out of smoke or what but love you, uh, Jesus. love you jesus yeah i was like maybe it's jesus Maybe it's a woman who's proposing to a guy named Jesus. Again, it's Florida. and But uh, it was Easter weekend, and so we um, uh, we inferred that that was a big. But imagine. I so, mean, unless that's your plane, you're paying somebody to do that. As a non-Catholic, do you guys still go to, like, Easter brunch or eat a fancy meal or anything, or you don't do anything do we? that day? Yeah. No. Is it, like, just it's just another day to you? Just another day. Because yeah. we're you not. You got an Easter basket? I mean, oh, we yeah. did we yeah. did that for Nora. Yeah, yeah. she's eight. Yeah. I mean, but that's just candy. I yeah. mean, she it's got yeah. no it's got no connection. When I was a kid, we were like doing Lent, yeah. right? So we had given up stuff, chips or whatever. Or what? I mean, one one Lent, I gave up television that's because dumb. every year, every year you had to like ratchet it up. Yeah, and we didn't get. Imagine, don't even ask what was going on in my house, right? We don't have it. We're not getting anything anyway. We don't get candy. We don't get pop. We don't get, I'm like, what am I supposed to give up? Right. We, we don't have anything. We don't get. Laughter. S- syrup. I mean, I'm not, you know, we're using molasses. You know the thing that drowned those people in Boston in the early 1900s? Alan, yeah. That's very inconsiderate. Yeah. So when Lent that's would come around, I was legitimately like, mom, what am I supposed to give up? TV, you know, because yeah. every kid thinks he's got a loophole. I'm giving up broccoli. That whole thing, you know. I was like, well, I like broccoli. I See, like, we're, like a cool kid. we're not religious, right? I grew up religious. Brian wasn't raised religious at all, and they don't raise his daughter no. religious at all. Nope. She doesn't go to church, nothing like that. She's been to church services in, like, funerals and things mm-hmm. like that. Um, but the last three years in a row, we've gone, we've been on her spring break for Easter, and we've done an Easter buffet. And she absolutely loves it. It was her first time ever at a buffet when she was like six, and she was like, "This is well, that's the like a buff- coolest That's thing. not like a church thing, right? No, it's not a church thing, but it's that's like, like a- our little tradition is okay. that we usually go to an Easter buffet. And uh, she was like, "You mean all of this is free, and I can have as much as I want?" It's like, yeah. well, it's not free. We already paid for it. But yeah, go have mm, have nice. Sounds like she was raised a want. little bit Jewish to me. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, she did eat an entire plate of locks, though. At the Easter oh, those are pretty good. Locks are tight. She's eight, 
and I she put she put like you four like what pieces, you like. She put four pieces of smoked salmon on her plate. Yeah. And I was like, Yo, have you had this before? She's like, Yeah, I love salmon. And I was like, Why don't you take like a piece or two, see if you like it? She's like, No, I know that I like it. And I was like, Okay. So she put like f- she started with four. She put like five or six on there, whole plate of salmon, and then ate it all and went back and got more. I was like, what? The uh, that's good though. That means she's getting her money's worth because yeah. that's that's one of the more expensive items there. Yeah, that's your sure. high ticket food right yeah. there. Yeah. Actually, I misspoke. It was Florida, so we did. Uh, we went to a um, Jimmy buffet. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. I no. think. I gotta go. Oh. <laughs> gotta go. Oh, yeah. Don't go yet. This is Hot Celebrity Gossip with Perez Bilton. Ooh. Oh, it's been a while, but Goss Daddy's back. <laughs> Perez Bilton's got that hot Goss. <laughs> you fill your whole plate up and more. All right, let's get things started. Uh, Ricky Martin was on stage with Madonna at a performance, and he's being accused of having a boner on stage. <laughs> While he was getting a lap dance from some of her male dancers, we have video. Oh, let me bring it up here. Yes. Yep. For the people listening. Uh, It was Ricky Martin sitting in a chair and two uh, dudes just grinding on him and stuff. Uh, You can see some, you can see it on. He had a full rod. Yeah. Well, that's, that's, you know, who knows? Uh, Just because pound cake's gone doesn't mean the show's not going to still do gay stuff. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Uh, But according to Inside Sources. Inside Sources. Ricky Martin says it was just a pants tent. It was just fabric. Just fabric. <laughs> oh, yeah. Faux shiz, faux shiz. Well, mm-hmm. to season one of Curb Your Enthusiasm. I was going to say, it's a Larry David yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, second up, uh, we talked about this a little bit, but Morgan Wallen, he's in the, the news because he got arrested Monday morning after getting a little drunk Sunday night at Eric Church's new six-story bar in Nashville. Uh, he threw a chair off the roof and almost hit two cops. Uh, but luckily, nobody was injured, according to Inside Sources. Inside Sources. This is all just Morgan Wallen's plan to do a little viral, viral marketing for a new song he's got coming out called My Truck, My Beer, My Chair. Say it again. <laughs> oh, yeah. Faux shiz, And finally, Sylvester Stallone is being accused of using some... Not so kind language for extras on the set of his show, Tulsa King. Uh, the casting director, or what was her job? Casting supervisor, Rose Locke, said that he called certain members of the uh, extras uh, fat, ugly slobs, <laughs> and uh, old fat man with a cane. Not the kindest language. And then he also said he wanted the casting director to surround him with beautiful girls and according to inside sources inside sources even though he denied saying these things we have audio uh here is sylvester stallone saying that these are fat ugly slobs all right and here's sylvester stallone saying uh he wants to be surrounded by young beautiful girls can we hear uh, one more time, Alan? Could you play again uh, when he was uh, calling <laughs> them fat, ugly slobs? Slob, king, ugly, beautiful women, the Romeo time. Pretty undeniable. Yeah. So that's all for this week. It's Perez Bill. This is Hot 
celebrity gossip with Perez Bilton. How does Perez Bilton get all of that just unprecedented access? Because I got inside sources. I can't. Oh, that's I can't, ex- inside I can't sources. Say who they are mm-hmm. because then they'll go away. So I got to keep my inside sources off the books. Yes. Inside. Is it, inside yeah. sources. Boy, God bless Ricky Martin because the headlines, there's nothing to be embarrassed about. He's a good looking dude. And obviously he's a gay man. So, I mean, if women were grinding all over a straight dude, you know, something might happen. But the headlines all say. Ricky Martin accused of having massive erection. Yeah, hey, it's, yeah that's there good. You go. Yeah, that's good press. That's what you want? Massive erection. Yeah, I don't like that. Morgan Wallen has been listening to the show, and I think stole Poundcake song. My truck, my beer, my chair, my chair. Yeah, mm-hmm. that Morgan Wallen boy he can't yeah. stay out of trouble, dude. If he would just drink by a river like they're supposed <laughs> to, he'd be fine. But he keeps doing it out in public. Yeah, but you know what? People give this guy a hard time, and I absolutely, obviously, don't like all that N-word stuff. But, you know, back in the day, you're classic country outlaws, right? You were getting snatched up for stuff. You were getting into fights. You were. It was a little more exciting than throwing a chair over a balcony. Not even hitting the cops. I was going to say, well, the cops. but imagine if he had. Imagine if he killed a cop With because a chair. a chair fell on his head. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm sure his fans would forgive him. Yeah, yeah, they're very selective about when well, they support uh, that. Well, they're very back the blue, though. So if he killed a cop, that might be what broke him. But are they? They're, they're back the blue when they feel the like blue it. are giving other people a hard time. Yeah. Not so much when they're giving them a hard time. But, I mean, imagine that. This guy really lucked out by not hitting anyone with those chairs. Because one thing, if you get into a, you know, uh, get into a, a bar brawl or something like that, like back in the day. But, oof. All right, I'm going to break here. Uh, Want to send a text? 35192. Want to go see Josie Scott's saliva? You know the band Saliva? He's the original front man, and there's been some acrimony in that organization, so he is letting you know it's him back in front. They're going to play Temple Live at the Asylum Room in a couple of weeks, April the 18th. That's a week from this Thursday, so I'll have those tickets for you after the break. On 100.7 WMMS. And everywhere you go on our free iHeartRadio app.
want to go see Josie Scott's Saliva. The band Saliva. Josie Scott was with them for a while. He was their original frontman. And then he bailed. And there was uh, two versions of the band out there. Hence, Josie Scott's Saliva. Seven Circle Sunrise and Artificial Astronaut. That is the support. If you're hip to either of those bands, they're going to be there too. It's a week from Thursday. Next Thursday, the 18th, they're going to play Temple Live in the Asylum Room. Look into that. Ticketmaster.com has the details if you need them. Two tickets for you. Caller 10. Josie Scott's Saliva next week. Uh, Good luck. 216-578-1007 or 800-348-1007. Our live stream is now Scratch and Sniff. In that you can scratch the screen and then sniff your fingers. Yeah. The Alan Cox Show. 100.7. WMMS. DJ Cummerbund has done it again. He calls this Wish of Confusion. He mashed up Stevie Wonder, I Wish, and Disturbed covering Land of Confusion. That was originally a Genesis song, of course. But pretty I, good. I like it a lot. I got followed by DJ Cummerbund. You did? I did. Nice. That was a that was a cool moment. Was that's like, a banner day. Hey, he followed me on Instagram. I was like, hey, that's pretty cool. He's a hey, pretty cool oh, guy. That's yeah. a very talented guy. Give me a follow. Appreciate it. By the way, not at the very top, but uh, congratulations to our own William Squire, who did come in eighth in the office pool brackets. Oh. <laughs> did you see this? I, I forgot. I knew I wasn't coming in first, so I didn't. No. Uh, you know, it's funny because conventional wisdom tells you you're throwing darts at a board. And, mm-hmm. and you know, so when there's an office pool for the NCAA brackets, a lot of times it'll be, you know, Barb and accounts payable who will win or whatever. Uh, this year, though, a couple of full-on sports dudes won. Dennis Maniloff, the D-man over there at WTAM. Oh, yeah, he knows his stuff. He really knows his stuff. He won the men's and the great Mike Snyder, also of WTAM. He won the women's. Uh, but our own uh, Bill Squire shows up uh, number eight in the men's. Uh, Mark Nolan, dead last. What a nerd. And... <laughs> You guys didn't even fill one out, did you? Did not play. No. Nope. I tried to. I downloaded the app and everything and then followed the link, or at least I thought, and I actually just played with CBS Sports. I didn't actually oh, fill out the right, right link. Yeah. So, because it, it was like, the, we checked it after the first round, and I was like, I got every single one wrong. And then I was like, oh, no, I just didn't even do it. I, so I came in like 700,000th in the CBS Sports. There are also so many people on this list, I have no idea who they are. Like, there are coworkers, right? Right? But I don't see, I don't know who they are. I don't know that I've met these people. You're like, who's Daryl Wallace? <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't get on D-Dub, boy. He knows what's up. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I did not play, did not get into the thing this year, but uh, uh, the D-man and Mike Snyder over there at WTAM, you'll hear um, uh, Mike uh, tomorrow night in the Cavs game. Last three uh, games of the regular season, the homestand. Be nice if the Cavs were to pull out a, a trio of wins to balance the uh, three-game slide they're on right now. The Guardians will play the second of three against the Chicago White Sox. Uh, tonight at 6.10, so we'll get out of here a couple minutes early, make room for that, get you right into the first pitch around the corner at Progressive Field. It looks to be a beautiful night for Cleveland baseball. A uh, little bit cloudy, but I, in the break here, I was getting some more water. I looked out the window. It didn't look like there was a cloud in the sky. It looked very sunny out, so I'm not sure what they're All good. Uh, looking at, but uh, the hell do I know? Um, by the way, I did, we were talking last break, about Easter brunch, and we didn't do an Easter brunch. You know what we did on Easter night? What? We went to a pirate show dinner. 
Hey. Whoa, that sounds fun. Yeah. That's just like Jesus would want. That's what I thought. That's why we went. And I I don't know that any of us were like super. Did they are in pillage? <laughs> yeah, they did. A lot they of pillaging, yeah. Here's the thing, though. We figured, oh, this will be a pirate version of medieval times, right? Yeah. So our, we just showed our daughter like a month ago, Princess Bride, for the first time. So this was not a tough sell. Turns out she loves that movie. That's right? a great movie. And she's at a perfect age for yes. that movie. Yes, yeah. But this place is like packed out. It's with only he- mostly dead. <laughs> <laughs> this place is packed out with heathens, right, on Easter. Yeah. And it was pretty legit. I got to say, I don't know if it's a chain or what it is. What's but it like, called? It's called, oh God, what was it called? Um... Pirate Adventure, maybe. Um, Pirates Dinner Adventure, okay? Kid-friendly, this is how they describe it. Kid-friendly dinner drama with acrobatics and music takes place on an 18th century ship. (laughs) Ship replica. There was so much going on at this thing. You know, medieval times, if you've ever been, they haven't changed a goddamn thing at medieval times in 30 years, right? Well, so, it's medieval times. What else what are they going to do? <laughs> no, well, I they mean, they haven't, <laughs> they haven't updated the menu. <laughs> I mean, the things that you can change for something like that, they haven't changed at all. So, you know, when, you my, your skin? when my older kids were little, we took them to medieval times outside Chicago. Exactly the same as when we took... Uh, Nora, a couple of years back in Toronto, exactly the same, right? It's still like a, a game hen and tomato. You know, you go to medieval times, you go, you have a kid's menu? No. Are you kidding me? Really? You don't have, like, lemonade? There are no kids like in medieval times. <laughs> <laughs> but this pirate thing, so we think it's going to be like that, and we're like, it'll be fun. It was legit, dude. There was, like... Yeah, acrobatics, and they're swinging around, and they're dancing, and then there's like a was there- midsection where there's like, it's more like WWE. Oh, and nice. It was that actually whole, sounds really It fun. was great. The food was good. We were like all walking out going, wow. Yeah. What is pirate food? Huh? What is pirate food? I what had salmon. Oh. I had salmon. It yeah, was like fish. a massive piece of really good salmon. But like my brother-in-law got chicken, and you know, it was good. So that's what we did on Easter night. Nice. Yeah. Do you know they have a vegan version of that restaurant? This is going to be so bad. <sighs> uh, I'm ready. <laughs> don't even. Don't even. You don't want me to do it? You're curious. What's the vegan pirate uh, version? Pirates of the Carrots and Beans. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It was even worse than. I told you it was really bad. Carrots and Beans. Beans. Carrots. <laughs> <laughs> Tell that manager I'm available too, man. I am absolutely not. <laughs> Next first know. lunch you have. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I got a guy I want you to meet. How does Pirates of the Carrots and Beans hit you? I got other things. Yeah. No. <laughs> we did take a day at Universal, though, um, because we had never been there. And my daughter doesn't care about Disney, right? She's not. That doesn't click with her. But Universal, there's a couple of rides. They have, like, a Simpsons area, and they've got, um, that's, like, the big Harry Potter park. She's not into that. But, boy, that's when uh, the Harry Potter. Oh, here we go. Alan hating on Harry Potter. No, 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 I'm not at all. No, 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 it's kids, and uh, God bless them. Do whatever you want to do. All I could think was, you know, the Harry Potter series is set in England, so the costuming is climate appropriate. So all these poor nerds are walking around Orlando at 85-degree heat with robes and wool scarves on. You mean the attendees or the workers? No, the attendees. That's their choice. Understood. Understood. I'm just saying, I was like, oh, God, you you could have come and enjoyed it in a Harry Potter T-shirt. You opted for the robe and the scarves and the thing and whatever. But I didn't realize that Universal... My daughter went on her first roller coaster, and that was a huge hit. We bookended the day with the roller coaster because when we first walked in, that's what was there. She had never been on one before. We we do this. On our way out, she wants to do it again, but she wants to sit right in front. Nice. That's the kind of family we are. 
So, but in between, I guess what I didn't realize is, and people who've been to Universal know this, is that all of the rides are basically like the platforms that just tilt and bend and move with rows of seats, but you're in like a giant IMAX theater. Yeah. I got so frigging nauseous from those things. I hate yeah, those. those. Are terrible. I got so. I don't I'm think like, I've ever been in one of those. Oh my god! I thought maybe they, they just were jostle you. Yes, I thought they were going to be like different kinds of things. Like no. they have a frigging Jimmy Fallon ride because it's Universal, so it's all the NBC and Comcast IP or whatever. But why do they have the Sim- Simpsons is owned by Disney now? Is it just they I know still I don't have it licensed I don't, for a while probably, probably? Yeah. yeah they have we had ate lunch at Moe's Tavern and so that was like super fun was it Moe's Tavern or was it uh, Uncle Moe's family feedback <laughs> no, it, it was Moe's Tavern <laughs> did you now, get flaming Mo I got we got a hamburger that was four thousand percent better than it needed to be. Oh, that's it good. was fully legit. But anyway, I had no idea that it was all those like tilty platform rides. You know, Ugh. oh god, I was like, I told my daughter, I go, honey, we're gonna need a because she loves them. I go, we're gonna need a few minutes in between these rides to like compose ourselves. <laughs> it's like I can't. Because years ago we did the promotion where we took listeners in the fast pass at yeah. Cedar Point, and they marched us right up to the front of the rides. Yeah, you need you I need did time. at least you need yeah. downtime in between. Yeah, those, we're doing like five c- consecutive roller coasters in twenty minutes. I'm like, oh my god! You know, you know what make you feel better though, if you go to Pirates of the Carrots and mm-hmm. Beans. They didn't have that ride. It's one of the tra- Nobody has that ride. One of the restaurant. Transformers ride and the Simpsons ride, and at least in line at the Simpsons ride, you, you're showing the Simpsons, right? You're watching right. the Simpsons. They don't show Transformers in the Transformers ride. No, they have like a pre-recorded thing oh, where they're like, to make you seem like you need to help. You us. have to help us. Yes. We're Autobots. Well, why do you need help from humans? You're big robot monsters. Why? Why would you need a human to help you? Right. It's, it makes no sense. No, you've come from another planet. Mm-hmm. You're so technologically advanced. Yeah. You turn into cars. Cybernetic beings. And, <laughs> and here you are, you turn into cars that can't even pass E-check. You're our only hope. <laughs> I'm with a dolphin and, you know, the whole bit. So it was a good time. It was nice. It's awesome. Yeah, it was nice. Oh, you know what else made me happy when I got back? They're putting a sheets by me. Ooh. Building a brand oh, new I'll sheets. doing that, uh... No, that ribbon cutting. Are you going to get out there? I, I, mean, I think it's in I've Avon. It's, it's like I, south I of 90 in Avon there by the Meyer, across I, street from Meyer. I like his sheets, man. I yep. like his sheets quite a bit. MTO, baby. Mm-hmm. I was very excited. I was getting on the highway from getting my hair cut this morning, and I'm like, oh, what are they building here? And a lot of times I don't like – I'll tell you what I don't like. I don't like when they don't put a sign up that tells you what's coming. <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what I don't like. I'll tell you what I don't like. <laughs> it just hit me the right way. Well, they have, like, a lot of times they'll have a sign of the construction company yeah. doing the job. Right. I don't care about that. I get that I it's your. I want to know what's going to be here. Tell right, me they, what's future home of. They tore down a Pizza Hut, an old, like, full-size Pizza Hut in Lakewood on 117th, and they were building something, and I was just speculating for all these years. I'm like, what's going to be? Is it going to be, uh, you know, a Five Guys or something like that, and it ends up being goddamn urgent care. <laughs> How dare they put an urgent care there? I need a Chipotle. They're putting a Chipotle by me, too. We a couple a, of Chipotle. We already got a Chipotle. No, we I know. One, we got one of the worst Chipotles. <laughs> <laughs> that 117 Chipotle is always it's <laughs> dastardly. Dastardly Chipotle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I'm kind of back on the wagon a little bit with them, so right. I'm like, oh, good. We'll be Was it the hint of pineapple? Chicken al pastor. Uh, yes, I did. Yeah, the chicken al good. pastor. I forgot my bell today. Uh, oh. Yeah, I did. Chicken al pastor. You know why? Because it's got a little bit of heat and it's got some lime. Mm-hmm. And it's got cilantro. Okay. It's got cilantro for freshness. And it's sure all does. pineapple. It's a hint of pineapple. Oh, okay. <laughs> Be very careful when you say that. Hint. Uh, yes. Well, I will tell you, and no disrespect, I didn't get uh, any hint of pineapple in what I was eating. Uh, I you tasted. Don't have a developed uh, palate. Well, that might be true. But normally, um, hint is just a marketing word, right? Hint means you're. It's going to be. Pineapple maybe, maybe forward. Maybe not. <laughs> Pineapple forward. Yeah. But it's good. It's very good. 
You didn't go on any Marvel-themed rides? No, because you know why, and I don't think I realized it at the time, but Universal is connected by one of the Harry Potter, Diagon Alley, the Harry Potter thing. The other side of the park is called Islands Adventure or something. That's where all the Marvel stuff is. Wait, but, I thought all the Marvel stuff was at Disney. No. I'm so confused by that. I, I am too. Yeah. No, the Marvel stuff is in the Island Adventure on the uh, other side of Universal. But we were like, I'm not looking to pay like $1,500 like for these there. dumb rides, you know, so. Stop it. <laughs> what? Stop. Island Adventure sounds like there's probably pirates there, probably. Yeah. You know what They take cash and charge <laughs> out there. Yeah. I didn't ride the mummy. No. We went on the, uh, the roller coaster when you first. Poor Gwen. Why? You didn't ride the mummy. Oh my God. Mary, you want to go? Can we both go? Yes, let's go. I'll take over the show. <laughs> no, you're gone. Clever puns. <laughs> Just the best puns you've ever heard. Never. Alan, why didn't they put on an Easter swashbuckling adventure? Oh. Pontius yeah, Pirate. <laughs> Alan, also, Mary's sis, please tell Mary her sister is hot. Which sister? Probably both. Both. Hmm. We were, uh, I was posting a bunch of pictures from Vegas, so I'm assuming they were following that. Who oh, knows? they were, oh, I see. They were looking at your sister and, hey. That would be she's, my guess. Hey, yeah. there's a hot uh, person. <laughs> I don't know. Hey, there's a hot person. At. Yeah. They're looking at. By the way, speaking of Jimmy Fallon, Conan O'Brien is going to do the Tonight Show tonight for the very first time since he left it. And when you walk into this, they have a at Universal, they have um, a recreation of 30 Rock. And so it's this Jimmy Fallon, like, street racer ride or whatever. But you're walking through what looks like 30 Rockefeller. So you're walking past all these old... Johnny Carson things and whatever, and it looks like the Tonight Show lobby. And they have, obviously, in the lineup of hosts, Conan's in there. But he was on that job so briefly that it seems weird to have him in there. And obviously, people remember how acrimonious that whole thing was. But he has an HBO show, a travel show or something. And so he is doing Jimmy Fallon tonight. The first time that he has been on the Tonight Show since he hosted the show which was 20, 30, 10 years ago, right? Yeah, it's been... And he was there for, like, a summer. But... I, was it 20... I thought it was... I Fallon's been doing it for longer. a decade. Yeah. So, yeah. I thought it was longer, though. Maybe. Yeah, maybe so. But he's doing fine, you know, doing the podcasts. and Must be nice if you're already a well-established celebrity and you go, you know what? I'm going to do a podcast. Do it for a year and a half, sell it for $150 million, and then be all right. But Conan O'Brien must go is his, he was, when he was still doing the late night show, one of the most popular things he would do were those travel packages where he would go overseas and just talk to people. Those were like some of the most popular things he did because he's fantastic at them. And so the show on HBO is called Conan O'Brien Must Go, and he's going to be on Fallon tonight to promote that. Now, I don't know if they're going to have him smashing raw eggs in his face or playing whipped cream super soakers. Oh, I don't know what they're going to do. Probably not. But um, he hasn't been on The Tonight Show uh, since he left. I'm sure that they'll make reference to that. Can you imagine if nobody mentioned it? He just went there and they had like a standard celebrity host conversation. Yeah. Never made mention of it. I hope he can crack old stone face Jimmy Fallon. You know, that guy doesn't laugh at anything. That guy's a hard laugh. Well, his humor so dry, you know. <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Harry Potter Land used you to be. You know what? He would have laughed at Pirates of the Carrots. <laughs> <laughs> He'd be doubled over. He'd be like, this is mm -hmm. the best thing I've ever heard. I do like that Easter thought, though. That's pretty good. Pontius Pirate. Not bad. I don't get that. I'm sorry? I don't get it. Are you familiar with Pontius Pilate? No. Oh. Are is you... that an Easter thing? It no. is an Easter it's thing, yes. It's yes. The one that ordered Jesus to be killed. To be crucified, yes. Oh, really? Yeah. Pontius? <laughs> you don't meet a lot of... Po I think that was a title. Maybe Pilate was the title. I don't know. All but right. you don't meet a lot of Pontiuses. Well, they didn't have planes back then. I don't the think Ponti. that was it. It was Chris Pontius with Jackass. Yeah. That was the closest we ever got. Yeah, we called him Party Boy. Yeah. 
But yeah, the uh, the pirates made no reference to Easter, which I thought was. I like that, right? I want to see a secular pirate show. I don't want their, them up there uh, uh, doing some bromide about Jesus, our Lord and Savior. I don't need that. I got a break. Um, you want to go see Better Than Ezra? Remember Better Than Ezra? Oh, boy. These guys, they got a hot front man, yeah. and they're coming back to town. They were number and, one uh, on the charts. And in music news, number one on the college charts this summer was Better Than Ezra. And at number two, Ezra. <laughs> kind of Norm just stares into the camera. That was the his best. superpower. So I'll hand those uh, tickets off for you when we return. You want to text for anything else, 35192, and we'll be back. It's the Ellen Park Show. Everywhere on our free iHeartRadio app or whatever smart device you have. Just tell me to play the Alan Cox Show on iHeartRadio. Our 2024 iHeartRadio Music Awards. Streaming now on Hulu. Find out what the winners had to say. Ladies and gentlemen. iHeart Innovator Award recipient, Beyonce. Thank you to iHeartRadio. You call me an innovator, and for that, I'm very grateful. Best new artist, Jelly Roll. Being a kid, and all we did was ride around and listen to the radio. I never would have dreamed I would be one of the voices coming through your radio. Multi-award winners, SZA. I heard, I guess I always saw other people winning these awards, and I'd be like, man, that's that big stuff, that's that radio stuff. I heart icon, Cher. I feel really blessed and lucky with this award. Artist of the Year, Taylor Swift. I heart, you've all just been so incredibly supportive over the course of my entire career, but especially this year, it's been pretty spectacular. And more, plus iconic performances live on the iHeart Awards stage. Our 2024 iHeart Radio Music Awards. Stream now on Hulu. From the Universal Windows Direct Weather Center, WMMS Weather. Tonight, rain showers mainly after midnight, low 50. Cloudy tomorrow, some rain, a high of 63. Thursday, showers and thunderstorms. Thursday's high 66. This report is sponsored by Oaks Roofing and Siding. Your home's roof should be built to last, like the reputation of Oaks Roofing and Siding. They have hundreds of reviews backing up their quality. For free design, estimate, and payments as low as $99 a month, call 866-661-OAKS or visit oaksroofingandsiding.com. If you're like me, you love a great deal. And that's what you're going to get at Ken Gainley, Ohio's number one Kia dealer. We're discounting over 800 new Kias, including Seltos, K5, Sportage, Forte, and Telluride. Buy with as low as 0% APR financing for 60 months, zero down, or just sign.
All right, I want to go see the return of Better Than Ezra. They're on the Live a Little tour. You're going to party like it's 1995. 95? Thursday, May 16th. That's just a few weeks away, around the corner downtown here at the House of Blues. You go to Ticketmaster.com for all the info. Okay? Better Than Ezra. Car 10. These are yours. 216-578-1007 or 800-348-1007. As soon as I can learn how to run a computer, I am starting an online petition to have Alan Cox taken off the air. So help me God, I'm having him taken off the air. Alan Cox Show on 100.7 WMMS. And in music news, number one on the college charts this summer was Better Than Ezra. And at number two, Ezra. (laughs) Staring into the camera, Norm. You magnificent bastard. Best. Guardians play tonight, second of three against the, um, I'll just say it, they're my team, but the uh, lowly Chicago White Sox, they couldn't get anything going yesterday. Real crap sacks. <laughs> I mean, not to put too fine a point on it, but I mean, uh, they are looking for their second win. They are one and nine. I was hoping it would happen yesterday. It didn't happen. But let's see. White Sox, Guardians tonight, 610. Uh, within the hour, um, we'll get out of here and make way for that. And then the third of three, you'll hear tomorrow afternoon, same time, 610, on WTAM 1100, because we will have Cavs basketball. Last three regular season games, tomorrow night, Friday, and then Sunday afternoon, Cavs will wrap the regular season. They're on a three-game slide right now, so... Um, uh, Law of averages says there's going to be a win in the last three games. I really hope all three of them are wins. Yeah. It would be nice to go into the postseason with some momentum. Yes, it really would. They've, uh, they've had a tough go of it after the All-Star break. A lot of, a injuries, lot of injuries. But a lot of games, that, that I mean, they had a 26-point lead against the Clippers on Sunday, and they blew it. Mm-hmm. They blew it. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, so Cavs basketball tomorrow night, but you get the Guardians tonight. I'm just happy. I was happy yesterday when we were at the ballpark. I'm happy baseball is back. Me too. I just like baseball very much. It's nice that the Guardians are winning. Mm-hmm. It's nice. Um, Not a bunch of crap sacks like the White Sox. <laughs> like yeah, I know. Yeah. I got to tell you, I thought that there, you know, in between our breaks yesterday during the broadcast, I would do some laps you know, around the park at, not around the full park, obviously, but I do some walking around, stretch my legs. This is pre, post gates, but pre eclipse. And I thought I was going to run into more White Sox fans. I just really did. Um, and it was wishful thinking because by and large, White Sox fans don't, don't really travel. Uh, so I got, uh, I got two or three fist bumps uh, and that was it. I had my White Sox hoodie on yesterday, my my old school Sox hoodie. I had to represent. What? What part of crap sacks don't you understand? People aren't going to travel for it. I mean, listen, we won the World Series before the Cubs did. But at, but Chicago's a Cubs town. What have you done for me lately? Nothing. You crap sacks. I know. <laughs> but this is also not a good time for them to be wanting a new stadium, right, in a different part of town. Yeah, we want to. Why don't they just share Wrigley Field? Shut up, Bill. All those Southsiders are going to go all the way up to Wrigley Field? No way. That's such a great city. I imagine it's easy to get around. Please. Wrigley Field, that's the domain of, you know, girls in pink jerseys and things like that and bros high-fiving each other. No, thank you. You won't find any bros high fiving each other <laughs> at a White find Sox game. Any people at all? <laughs> if you do, boy, they just the- relocate the White Sox to a different city. A different city? Yeah. I okay. mean, give it to Little Cleveland, Des Moines. <laughs> uh, I mean, does a city need two baseball teams? No. 
Doesn't sound I, like I, Chicago does. I, I don't know. Um, you could make the case that Chicago does not. But, um, again, I come from a Cubs family, so as a young boy, I became a White Sox fan out of spite, and I have maintained my fandom um, ever since then. The Moines White Sox. I don't like the ring. I don't like the sound of that. I think it sounds good. The Des Moines White Sox. I mean, the entire state of Iowa doesn't have a professional team, right? Right. Exactly. This will be the first one. That's why they get a ton of support. Oof. You're hogging it. Mm-hmm. Hmm. They would get a lot of support. Like when the Thunder went to Oklahoma City, they were very well supported. Still are because it's the only professional team in the state. Yeah. So you send the White Sox down to Iowa, which is where baseball was invented, I think. That's why that's where Field of Dreams was. So <laughs> th- that's where – put them at the Field of Dreams. Just make it that. That's their home stadium now, mm-hmm. the, the cornfield one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you build it, they will come. Yeah. Well, listen, uh, White Sox are rivaled in their uh, crap-tastic uh, by the, only by the Florida Marlins. Florida Marlins uh, are 1-10. in 10. And, crap sacks. Uh, cra- I'm sorry, crap sacks. Crap yeah. sack stick. Terrible. <laughs> um, but uh, what are you going to do? You got to root for who you root for. I, I think we're on to something with moving the White Sox to Iowa. Well, fortunately, I have no say in it because my vote would be no because uh, I'm not going to go to Iowa to see games. The only the last time you went to a Chicago game. Chicago to see games. Oh, yeah, I it? mean, last summer? No. You went to, uh, you went to a game. White Sox came in Chicago? Yeah. You drove, you went to Chicago specifically to see a game. No, no, no. But, like, if I'm home and they're in town. Um, Did they win? No. They did not win. <laughs> no. See. But that's what I'm used to. I don't know what yeah. to do when they win. Yeah, you go to Iowa and you enjoy some Iowa. Oh, uh, please. Yeah, you'll, you'll love it there. Uh, you'll love it. I'm trying to uh, I'm trying to uh, keep an unbroken streak of never going to Iowa. They got this vegan pie restaurant. <laughs> stop it. Please. Just stop. What's it called? I, I don't this. know. I've never been there. <laughs> oh, all right. Mary knows. I can't. Yes, you can. I can't breathe. Just say it. I can't breathe. Didn't you go to that gym, Pontius Pilates? You didn't go? All right. Listen, Um, the only people who have it worse than me, God, the Oakland A's fans, all 10 of them, these poor sons of bitches, because they're officially going to Vegas, yeah, but, but for got- the next two seasons, they're going to be playing in Sacramento. Oh, you poor, poor people. Alan, when Bill was in the Philippines, did he ever see people getting crucified on Easter? Sure did. Yeah, that's uh-huh. a big thing down there, yeah. right? Yeah. Do you volunteer for that? Yeah. It's their you way. Of, they're not really getting crucified. They, they, oh. they like, they, they're standing on like a little platform and then they. But they do pierce their they hands. They pierce their don't, hands. Yeah. Though. Yeah. Like that, that part. All the way through? I don't think they go all the way through. I think that's. But oh really? I don't know. It it was, it, we never like inspected it, right? But you'd see them around. It was weird. It was a very weird thing yeah. to do. Yeah, all of the um, because it's it's kind of also all the, the places in a way like be like, oh, uh, uh, Jesus can do it. I can do it. Like it's not. <laughs> it's no big deal. <laughs> it's not even that hard. Yeah, it's not. Like, There's so much self-flagellation in like, religion too. You know, like beating yourself mm-hmm. up. I'm not worthy. It's like everybody, every religious person is like Wayne Campbell, <laughs> whipping yourself on the back. Treat it like it's an Iron Man contest. Alan, they could call them the Iowa Wet Sox. There you go. Baseball was invented in New York. Yes, that was the joke. Uh, but uh, did you see the woman on TikTok who is extolling the virtues of fart walking? Oh yeah, you watch this lady. Yeah, Yeah, they 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 eat dinner and they go for a fart walk. This lady and her husband, Mm -hmm. about every night, she's trying to get people hip to walking around um, to ease the bloating that might have come from dinner uh, with a leisurely fart walk. They're older and they eat a lot of fiber, and she's trying to get uh, everybody on board. Uh, Hashtag uh, fart walk, aging wonderfully. This woman calls herself. Marilyn, the queen of fiber. Now, for those of you who think, how can I break into social media? I don't really have a hook. Here's the queen of fiber mm-hmm. walking around talking about fart walks. Poo fiber. 
So there's something on social media for you. Whatever random possible niche you think um, might uh, need some action, uh, the fart walk lady is out there on TikTok. And spoiler alert, she's got a lot of followers. For a fart walk after dinner is something that's going to help you age wonderfully. And if you follow me, you know that my husband and I go out for fart walks most nights after dinner. So about 60 minutes going after for a we fart walk after we dinner is something that's going to help and you age go. No, well, Hold on. This? Well, we and you got a lot of fiber. Fart no, uh, does. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, uh, I just want one fart walk, lady. Yeah. Going for a fart walk after dinner is something that's going to help you age wonderfully. And if you follow me... Now, do you want the noises or that little on the nose? Your show, man. Know that my husband and I go out for fart walks most nights after dinner. So about 60 minutes after we've eaten, we put on our running shoes and off we go. Now, why do we do this? Well, we eat a lot of fiber, so we have gas. <laughs> Everybody does. And, uh, yeah, you fart when you walk. So that's why we, I named it that. But the main reason that we do the fart walks is because... Uh, Man isn't getting old great. Mm-hmm. Oh, the fart walk lady. I mean, she definitely doesn't look gassy. No, she looks very... Uh, and you know... Not bloated and very happy. You know she wanted her husband in these with her. He's like, I don't want to be anywhere near this. Absolutely. Yeah, he wants to walk in front of her, not behind her. <laughs> <laughs> Stop bugging me, Marilyn. Uh, by walking for as little as two minutes, we usually walk for about 10, 15, 20, but not really quickly. It's more of a moderate walk. Um, we are helping reduce our chances of developing type 2 diabetes. Why? Well, because walking is helping maintain our blood sugars, keeping them from ricocheting all around. And as you age, especially after 40, uh, you have a bigger chance of developing type 2 diabetes. So, it's these little things. By the way, I don't know if any of that's true. Um, but uh, she certainly seems to believe it and feels that the path... It's not going to hurt you to go for a little walk after dinner. Fart walk. Right, but it's got nothing to do with the farting, right? I mean, that's just like, because she's old and she's like, you fart when you walk. It's the walking that's good for you. The walking's good for you, but getting the gases out is also good. Fart your farts. Yeah. I'm on board with this. Fart your you farts. On a regular basis, Otherwise... that can have a really big impact on your long-term health. So, sign yourself up for fart walks. <laughs> I invented the hashtag. Yeah, so on my grave. Is that a fart or a snort? That was a fart fart snort lady. (laughs) Fart walk inventor. Yeah, you know what? It's fun to be famous for something. (laughs) (laughs) I'm famous for something. The fart walk. You should have done a fart walk after you ate those egg sandwiches. I don't have to fart. You don't know that. It might be trapped. Well, not yet. I haven't farted yet. Who knows? That one guy says, I usually just watch some fart television after dinner and then go to fart bed. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not going to go out walking. Oh, this lady's got a lot of people following her. Marilyn, the queen of fiber. Oh, she's a, oh, I get it. She's a second city alum. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's why you've never heard of her, because she's out there being kooky, but she, of course, uh, went through second city. That's good. Now, I thought she had, like, millions of followers. The, the fart walk video blew up. She only has 2,400 followers. Yeah, I mean. It's nothing, then. That's what I'm saying. I thought, like, she already had a lot of people. So she's really hoping this fart walk does some heavy lifting. She just getting and the some word farting. out. farting. Huh? Yeah, she's getting the word out about farts. People didn't know about farts. Not fart, Old people not fart, fart when they walk. No, I mean, we're, we're, we're. I mean, I know we've had different relationships with grandparents, but if you've ever been around a grandparent, they can't stop farting. I, I, they walk across I a room, fart. That. I don't huh? think I've had that situation. Oh yeah. God, you don't. My grandmother, she farted nonstop. I think I just stopped caring. My grandma. That's what I'm saying. She wouldn't acknowledge it. She didn't. She probably didn't know. Didn't care. What the hell? Everything gets really loose. What? Oh, just a, the lottery sucks right now. The lottery. Yeah, yeah. yeah they like, win like a million, like a hundred million dollars right now. Like, what's the point? What's it, the matter with that? What? It was. It's at a. It was at a billion yesterday. Did somebody win it? I guess so. Oregon well, lottery was. winner comes forward. There you go. Yeah. Somebody yeah. won. Jerk. In Oregon. All How right. Much did you spend? I don't know, like fifteen bucks. Yeah. But so I did do some uh, blackjack. I called you that night, or I texted you. Yeah, you, you were playing here. I was playing at the Jack Casino after 
the comedy awards. And oh. Won like almost 500 bucks playing Hell yeah. blackjack and some roulette and some craps. It was a good time. Blackjack's fun. Blackjack is very fun when you're winning. Yep. Alan, in Canada, those fart walks are called poot a boots Okay. <laughs> I like that. That's great. Uh, and, of course, people are going to ask about the stairwell fart, if there's any update on that. No, and nothing. We, we were off nothing. for a whole week. We were off for a week, but I wasn't home <clears throat> for all of it. I was right. in Columbus and elsewhere, so didn't get, a good, didn't get a good stairwell fart. When I do, you'll know. We'll be the first to find out. Mm-hmm. I have an inkling. Mm-hmm. Well, okay, so that lady is um, very proud of herself that she coined Fart Walk. And, I, I mean, th- there has to be, that's not something you can do um, ad infinitum. I mean, how, how are you going to, what are the new angles on the Fart Walk? She kind of got one good video, explained everything, yeah. and then people go, oh, all right. Well, she yeah. mostly talks about fiber. Yeah, but she the, is the queen of fiber. Queen of fiber. Mm-hmm. Fart Walk is just a little bonus thing. It took off, but she's probably mostly talking about fiber. I've been having a pretty good fibrous diet lately. <laughs> nice long coils like you're supposed to have. No breaks. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> nice long coils. She That's- spells fiber F-I-B-R-E, too. I don't know if she's uh, Canadian or I don't know what that is. That, But that would be a poot a boot Surely she would know about that. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so you've changed your diet. No, it just happens that I've been, I don't, whatever I've been doing has just led to nice long coils. Ah. Ew. What do you mean, oh, ew? So that's coils. It's a good, it's a good thing to have. It's the right I'm kind of poop to sick have. Or something. My food is never the same. It's never consistent. It's never the same size or shape or, or, girth. Yeah, because you're eating two lunches in three hours. Okay, that's just today. Oh, uh, you know it ain't going to just that be today. It's two lunches day. in one hour. <laughs> Next time, you said 11.30 and 2. Well, um, we met at 11.30. I probably got my food oh, at 12, okay. and then it was like 1, 1. <laughs> it's like 12 and 1. <laughs> but once word gets around, and that's not the only call you're going to get from some management company mm-hmm. that wants to be in the Mary Santora business. Right. You're going to be having... Two lunches. You should just keep You're going to be having multiple often. breakfasts. Every day. You're going to be having double brunch. Just take yeah. meetings to get free foods. That's what I should do. Just set up meetings and meetings and meetings. And just but here's the thing you lunch. guys are forgetting about. They have to agree to the meeting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So? Well, so, what's the matter with that? Yeah, you get them to agree and say, mm-hmm. I'm hungry. What do you want to talk to us about? I'm hungry. Like, oh, come by the office. We'd love to show you around. Like, mm, I only eat. I only have my meetings. <laughs> Lunch <laughs> meetings. That's all I get. <laughs> yeah. Do a dinner yeah. meeting, too. Twice in one day. There you go. You could have, yeah, there's conceivably going to be a day where you will have a breakfast meeting, mm-hmm. a lunch meeting, yes, and a dinner meeting. And then really? you'll know who to sign with. The agency that suggests the fourth meal meeting. Yes, the Taco Bell. After your last <laughs> last set. Hey, I have a 1 a.m. set tonight. You guys want to meet up at the Taco Bell? Let's get a slice. <laughs> talk. Yeah, talk make shop. up for all that walking you're doing. Yeah. Alan, nice long coils were at the Agora last night. They were amazing. There you go. Nice long coils. In honor of the eclipse. Yeah. My grandmother, Alan, had the walking farts, and she was very embarrassed, so she would smack her ass every time it happened. That's hilarious. She was embarrassed. (laughs) The walking farts. I think the new season of that just dropped on AMC, too. I got a break. 610 is when we're going to get you over to um, Guardians Baseball. They start at the second of three against the White Sox. Uh, Around the corner of Progressive Field. Tonight, so you'll hear all that here on MMS and on the iHeartRadio app. It's the Alan Cox Show on 100.7 WMMS. And everywhere you go on our free iHeartRadio app. It's the Alan Cox Show. Everywhere on our free iHeartRadio app or whatever smart device you have. Just tell me to play the Alan Cox Show on iHeartRadio. Ugh, spring. Try cleaning your air ducts and floors? Helps with allergies. Who has time? Use Coit. They clean air ducts, hardwood floors, upholstery, blinds, carpet, all the stuff that makes spring allergies worse. Great price and guarantee. Oh, maybe I'll give them a... Here, use my phone.
Cleveland. Hello, we're glad you're here. If you need assistance or just have a question, our associates will be glad to help you anytime. Call the Alan Cox Show, 216-578-1007 or 1-800-348-1007. What? Why did that just go in? I don't know. Hey there, Delilah. <laughs> what's it like in New York City? Yeah, it's not that. Oh, it's it was a that? full bit I did. Oh, okay. Uh, come on. Who cares, right? <clears throat> Hold on. Yeah, it's going to be worth waiting for. <laughs> hey, is it Hey there, Dump Lila? Hey there, Cicada. Oh, hey there, Cicada. Uh, <laughs> talking about cicadas again. Hey there, Cicada, it's so nice to hear you singing. It's been 17 long years, but bug, tonight you look so pretty. Yes, you do. I forgot I had a Kit Kat in the fridge. No one can sing as loud as you. So I just grabbed I it swear it's true. and broke one off. Hey there, Cicada, All chocolate. What? It didn't have, it didn't have the crispy in it. Yeah, the crisp. It was all chocolate. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah, we're just ignoring you. So have you been ignoring me this whole time? I've been asking if you can hear me. What whole time? I just potted no, you up. You, just now we can hear you. Oh. Yeah. Okay, so you were like, comment. I was commenting on like the song going out, and I was like, oh, I'm sorry about your Kit Kat. But then I texted the show, the group chat too, and I was like, can you guys? Because I thought maybe my end went out again. I no, like, I had you potted up. I don't know why we could. Maybe it did uh, cut out. Because I had you potted up the whole time. Well, here we are. Anyway, it took me a good two or three bites to go, why does this taste so different? It was all chocolate. The other ones have the uh, crispy crunchity or whatever it is. So we're talking. Nope, there it is. All chocolate. Um, We're talking about those cicadas again. Every few years, that's what we're talking about. And now they're like, yeah, there are trillions of them they are going to pop up. Because there are different breeds and broods or whatever that are going to be presenting at the same time, including the hypersexual zombie cicadas All right. that are infected with a sexually transmitted fungus. Trillions of cicadas. Because they come out every 13 or 17 years, right? So there's like this, as I understand it, this continuous cycle. Two different kinds of cicadas will emerge this year, where the 13-year and the 17-year coincide. Uh-huh. Now, they're not everywhere. I thought that they were in Ohio. A couple of people told me that they aren't, that they're going to be like in the southeast. I know we get them in Illinois, so I don't know what that means for Ohio or the rest of the Midwest. But... Uh, people, where they are going to get them, they're going to be everywhere. That's what they always say, and then we never see them. Well, because I don't think we see them here, but places that get them, especially if it's going to be, I mean, trillions. You know how big a trillion well, is? Yeah, it sounds I mean, pretend. That's too many. <laughs> That's too, they can't be it trillions. Made pretend. Up, That's made too up, many. yeah. Well, they come out of the ground. But right? trillions you see of them? them. Well, hey, like. Tens, I mean, twenties, thousands. I mean, walk okay. you through it. They come out of the ground, they molt, and then this fungus that makes them super horny, it causes, hold on. It causes the back of their abdomens to open up, and then a chalky white plug erupts, Ugh. taking over their bodies and making their genitals fall off. What? <laughs> And then it tries to do everything that it would normally do. I don't know why it's not hip to the fact that its genitals just fell off. It tries to mate. It flies around, walks on plants, but this fungus takes over its body. So they call it a horny zombie cicada. So if you're in a part of the country that's going to get them under normal circumstances, you'd be like, oh, my God. But this year it might be fun. You know, if you're walking around and you see trillions of chalky white plugs, uh, popping up, and genitals falling off. I mean, you don't want them falling out of trees and onto you, but that might be exciting. A lot of lizards, you know, we're in Florida, I always forget there's a lot of lizards down there. Little lizards. Yeah. And they're just running over all over the place. 
and raccoons. We had raccoons by the pool. And I guess I don't associate raccoons with Florida. I think of raccoons as something that we see up here. So I don't know if, like, they take buses down. Mm-hmm. I don't know if maybe they they wintering in Florida. Yeah. I the assume. The snowbird originated with raccoons. That's what I assume is happening. They get tired of going through northern trash, and uh, they'll come up here. Northern trash is actually the title of my next album. So, <laughs> <laughs> Mary Santora, Northern Trash. You know her as the jellyfish on the yes. cartoon show Jellyfish, and her new book, her new album, Northern Trash, is coming out soon. If you are a fan of the show, I think you should leave with the great Tim Robinson. Two-thirds of this show, big fan, that one. Uh, He has sold his next project to HBO. HBO has uh, picked up Tim Robinson's show called The Chair Company. And Adam McKay is going to produce. You read anything about The Chair Company? I have not read anything about it, but I'm excited about it because I love what he does. It's a half-hour comedy. Similar to Detroiters. I'm Mm going to be very happy. Yep. Half-hour comedy, uh, the premise is after an embarrassing incident at work. Oh, it's April in the D, by the way. I'm sorry? April in the D. <laughs> April in the D. April in the D. April in the D. Yeah. Uh, the chair company, after an embarrassing incident at work, uh, a man, played by Tim Robinson, finds himself investigating a far-reaching conspiracy. So there's uh, plenty <laughs> to enjoy on a show like that. Can I take your order? 55 burgers, 55 fries, 55 tacos, 55 pies, 55 cokes, 100 tater tots, 100 pizzas, 100 tenders, 100 meatballs, 100 coffees, 55 wings, 55 shakes, 55 pancakes, 55 pasta, 55 peppers, and 155 taters. Okay, that'll be $680. Okay. <laughs> That's Mary at her luncheons. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't pay for it. <laughs> uh, 55 taters, 55 pies. How Mary doesn't think that's the funniest thing she's ever heard that in is, her whole live long life, and in her whole ding dang life, huh? When you guys laugh your asses off at those clips, those I think you should leave clips. I am like, I do not understand this. It makes it I more fun for us. So funny. Fathom how anybody thinks that that show is funny. Hmm. All right. It's so dumb. And yet you can fathom because you know two people. But it doesn't make sense to me. Hmm. It never will. It is just not even close to it's so funny. anything I find funny. It's so funny. Oh, exactly. Wow. The bones are the skeleton's I money. I do like In our world, bones equal dollars. That's why they're coming out tonight to get their bones from you. The skeletons will pull your hair up, but not out. All they want is another chance at life. They've never seen so much food as this. <laughs> <laughs> I was bummed because I was in Columbus on Friday, but he was doing the live show, the live tour in Detroit, and that was the closest one. Yeah. And I wanted to go to that, but I had to go do, had to make other people laugh. I couldn't mm-hmm. go and just enjoy myself and laugh at what he does. But man, it looked like a lot of fun. Mike and Parma pointing out that that um, cicada thing is the new WAP, the white ass plug, coming right out. Hey, Captain Math, trillions of anything isn't going to be a good time. Uh, Trillions of dollars would be a good time, sir or madam. Thank you very much, Mr. or Mrs. Know-it-all. Trillions of... Trillions of compliments? No, that's too many. From family and loved ones? Trillions of compliments from strangers? No. Trillions of high fives from well-wishers? Your hand will fall off. Huh? Trillions? Well, Trillions. collectively, people are high fiving each other. They're not all high fiving oh. me. Trillions. Trillions. Of I people. mean, you have to think in the entirety of mankind, in the entirety of Homo sapiens time on this planet, there have probably been, well, not trillions, probably a trillion high fives have occurred. Performed. Yeah. A trillion high fives. Over the entirety of mankind. When did the high five start? 1642. And who did that? That was the Marquis de Five who started that. Sir Hyvius Fivus? Sir Hyvius Fivus, that's right. <laughs> he was part of the Inquisition, the yes. Spanish Inquisition. No one and expected it. Nobody saw them coming. 
the Spanish Inquisition. So, um, yeah. So, whoever wrote me that, I take your point. Trillions of cicadas, no good. But trillions of all kinds of other things would be great. Yeah, what about like trillions of boobs? Well, I mean, you can't have too much of a good good. thing. Not one person. Trillions, yeah, I'm fine. By the way, I'm fine with two. Uh, I can't do anything with trillions. I can't even conceive of that. It's worth trying. Trillions of boobs. (laughs) Well. So many boobs. Boobs. Yeah. All right, listen. um, I'm going to roll here so we can um, get going for the ball game. Did I mention there's a ball game tonight? There's a bunch Baseball of Baseball game tonight? Like oh, a trillion God. times. A trillion times. There are going to be a trillion balls out there at um, Progressive Field. <laughs> a trillion losses for their White Sox. Shut up, Bill. <laughs> What'd you call them? Crap sacks? Yeah. <laughs> well, I hope the crap sacks win tonight, by yeah, the way. Man. Anything to keep us from going to Des Moines. I hope they never win again. No, they will. If history is any guide with Little my White Cleveland. Sox, Little they'll get real hot in July, and then they'll get stone cold in August and September. No, oh, whatever. All right. Um, what do you got coming up? What do you want to throw in? I am headlining a show at Garage Bar in Willoughby. We did it back in, when well, was that, February? And they wanted us back, so we're going back. It's a different lineup. I'm doing all different material than I did in February. So uh, get tickets. Come on out. It's going to be a lot of fun. BillSquire.com or BillIsReal.com for all the other dates I have in the area and elsewhere. Oh, so if they saw you last time, there'll be a different show. It's a different show. You wow. Know, I, got, I got so many jokes. That's exciting. So many jokes. And they're all good. Mary Lynn. Follow me on social media at Mary Santor Comedy on TikTok, Instagram, or Facebook. You can also go to MarySantor.com for upcoming shows. What time is first dinner tonight? First dinner tonight's probably going to be around 7.15, 7.30, and then second dinner will probably happen around 1 a.m. <laughs> I have an 11.30 spot tonight. So. Oh, hey, all yeah. right, good. All right. I'm out there at Alan Cox's show. Uh, anything you missed today, uh, the program will be available for you very shortly on the iHeartRadio app. Uh, you can watch it if you like. Our YouTube channel is The Alan Cox Show. And if you want to leave messages, do it on the app or on the After Hours line. If you want to drop a voicemail, you can do it. 216-986-8903. Guardians baseball is next. Mere minutes away. Second of three against the White Sox at Progressive Field. We will talk to you again tomorrow around 2 o'clock. I'll see you in hell. And now I must leave you as the Brady Bunch is on. And I find four of those children incredibly arousing. (laughs) Get out of here. Careful of what you say. Be careful in every way. Be careful of what you do. Big Brother is watching you. Be circumspect and discreet. Stay light on your